Hello, everybody. Hope you guys can see and hear me. Hope everything is doing well for everybody. Just want to do a little sound check. Let me see. Can you guys hear and see me okay? I hope so. Um, okay. All right. Okay. I don't see anybody saying they can't hear me. So I guess you guys are good. Okay. So happy embroidery Friday, everybody. And, um, Today's topic, what am I going to talk about? Well, let me tell you how I came up with this topic, okay? Um, I went to, you know, to the store with a girlfriend of mine, right? And she picked up a shirt. And when she picked up the shirt, right, she was like, oh, you know, this is um, kind of like, you know, she was kind of like not complaining about the price of the shirt, but she was kind of like, oh, you know, this is, it's not on sale and stuff like that. So I looked at this shirt and the shirt was pretty simple. And then I was like, oh, we, you can make that. I said, you can make that. How much do you want for that? You can make that. So she made a comment of, is it really worth it? I mean, you know, is it really worth to do it? You know, I prefer to just pay for it. So I was kind of like, mm, I, I started thinking about it. And I'm like, is there a benefit? So to me, I was like, uh, yeah, but I was like, let's think about this for a minute. Okay. So why bother sewing and why bother doing embroidery, right? Is it worth it? Is it really worth for us to take our time to do this stuff, all right? So I started to think about it and I came up with like 12 things that to me are kind of benefit or, or benefits and things that, you know, to me it's like, yeah, it's kind of worth it, right? But if you guys can think of something as to why it's not worth it, let me know. Because, I mean, I know that not everybody's into sewing, not everybody's into embroidery, and that's okay. But I think sometimes when you are into sewing and you're into embroidery and then you're with some of your friends that don't, they really don't understand the benefits that you get from actually doing it, okay? Now, before I jump into the topic, though, I do want to show you guys some goodies, okay? Um, I have been doing a lot of exploring on where to get different materials. I know that, you know, we get a lot of stuff from Amazon. Sometimes we get it from Walmart. We get it from Joann's, um, Hobby Lobby and stuff. But I am really open into, like, where else can you go for your blanks? Where else can you go for fabric and all that kind of stuff, right? So there is a channel out there and it's called So Yeah. And it's uh, Y-E-A-H. And they do these lives, okay? It's like, I think it's like three guys or something like that. They do these lives and what they do is they actually sell fabric. So they do this live and then you like people go in the chat and they bid for the fabrics and stuff. I was watching it for quite some time. And then I was kind of like, hmm, well, something clicked in my mind. Okay, because I remember when I was with Miss Banks and we went to the sew and quilt shop and I see Mello. Mello, you want to come over here? Oh, God. All right. Sorry, guys. Come on, Mello. You can come. Come on. You can do your little debut. You want to show... You want, you want to say hi to people? Come on. He's bringing his bone right there. There he goes. Okay. All right. Everybody sees you, boo-boo. Okay, please don't make too much noise. Sorry about that, guys. You know, Mello, he's, gotta, he's always got to show up somehow, right? Okay. Yes, boo-boo. We love you, too. So, anyway, Miss Banks, when we went to the Sew and Quilt shop, one of the things that she was talking to me about was the quality of fabric okay now i'm not saying that when you go to joann's and you go to hobby lobby and in certain places you're not going to find quality fabric but i have noticed that sometimes when i do go to look at fabrics sometimes i notice that the fabric can be pretty on the cheap side but it also feels kind of cheap too almost feels kind of like you're buying paper sometimes in a way right so anyway I was looking at this live and they just go ahead and they just sell these fabrics live, right? And people just bid on them. And you don't really like bid. You just say, hey, I want that fabric. They got the prices all set. The prices seem to be pretty reasonable. Um, when they like trying to get rid of some of their fabrics, like $5.99 a yard, something like that. 
Well, let me show you. I just, I, I finally went in and I, I bit the bullet and then I decided I'm going to buy some. I just want to check it out. I want to see the fabric and stuff. Let me show you the fabrics that I got. And I got to tell you, I was pretty impressed. I was really impressed. I mean, these were like the bulk buys, okay? And they came really quickly in the mail. You know, it's like you register and then you, you know, they, they start to show and they start showing you the fabric and you just put your number in there and stuff. And, you know, they just say, hey, this is the, the fabric. And, and this was like a bundle, right? And look at this. Isn't that pretty? Let me show it to you this way. This is, you get a better view this way. Isn't that cute? So these are one yard cuts, okay? This was one bundle and I thought it was like really cute. Now I will tell you, I got it in the mail. The first thing I did was I did what like Miss Miss <laughs> Miss Banks taught me, you know, to feel it, right? This is really good quality fabric. This is not cheap. This is not, this is, this is not paper thin fabric. I mean, I was just like, wow. And then look, this is another set. I thought this was really cute fabric that I could use for like to create sewing bag bags. This is like a sewing theme. Let me put that in there. See, ain't that cute? Got the little scissors, um, this little flowers over here. And then this, these have the notions. So I was like, oh, this is really, really cute. So um, I fell in love with these. Um, and I think if you buy, if you make five separate purchases, I think you get free shipping. It's $5 flat, flat shipping, which to me, you know, that's a good price too. This was another set I fell in love with. Um, you know, it, this, this came four yards, okay? Look at this fabric. It's so cute. Ain't that nice? I really like the way they had their sets, right? The different colors. I mean, they really match. I mean, I look at these and I'm like, you know, I could really make like a tote bag. I could, you know, because the colors coordinate, I can do something with this. You know, now, did I have anything in mind when I bought it? No, I didn't. <laughs> but I will find something. I mean, I'm telling you, cute fabric. And I really like this too. I thought it was so classy. You know, I got this one and it has like the little yellow fabric and then it has the little green. So, I mean, really cute stuff. The quality of the fabric was really good. Um, you know, so to me, I mean, if you guys ever like catch one of their lives where they're selling fabric and stuff, I highly recommend register, watch the show. And if you actually see something that you like, I would, I would encourage you guys go for it and get, you know, and get some fabric from them because they, this was not bad. It was my first time doing it. And I think I will be a, um, a, a, a reoccurring customer for them because I really like the fabrics that they have, the good quality and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I mean, this was really, really nice. I was like, wow, this is very good quality fabric um, that, you know, the, the thickness of it and everything to me, it was worth every penny. Okay. It was, it was a pretty, pretty good price. So um, the other thing also that I wanted to show you guys um, is you guys know that I got a new serger, right? The Airflow uh, 3000. Well, I got to tell you something. I mean, I love that thing. However, I was a little disappointed in the rolled hem, okay? I did a video where I did a comparison of the Brother 1034DX and the Airflow 3000, okay? For the difference in the price, you would have thought that the Airflow 3000 would have done a gorgeous rolled hem. If you watch that video, you're going to kind of notice to me personally, and it could be maybe I just don't have my settings right on the machine yet, and I'm hoping that that's what it is. But I have to tell you, to me, the 1034DX is hands down um, a better machine when it comes came to sewing that stitch at the end of the video. And I could be wrong. It could be, like I said, that I maybe I have the settings a little off and everything. Um, I do like the machine. It's very, very quiet. But, um, you know, the other one is a little on the noisy end. But, hey, you know, it's all about the stitch at the end of the day, okay? So let me tell you also, you guys know that I love to do the kitchen towels, right? Well, like I said, I'm always on the hunt for better blanks and all that kind of stuff, um, better prices, better deals on Notion, sewing, and all that kind of stuff. 
I am not brand name Pacific and I'm not even loyal to any type of store or shop or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, it's about getting a good quality item that I can embroider um, and my stuff can be, you know, prestige. I started to look at these new kitchen towels. Now, these are like microfiber kitchen towels. I have not embroidered on this yet, but I just wanted to show you. These are new. One of the things that I do like about them, and this is called, it's an 18 pack. It's an 18 pack, and it's called Poly Twi. I got this off of Amazon. It looked to me that it was a cheaper price than getting the cotton craft that I usually get. But I will say this does look kind of thick. I really like the way they round the corners. Um, this does not come with any type of tags, okay, you know, with their, their brand or anything like that. So I figured what I could do is, you know, of course, I'm going to sew my tags on it, you know. But I am going to try it out this weekend. I'm going to embroider a couple of them. And I'm going to see how it holds off, how, how it holds up in the embroidery. And if it holds up pretty well, then I may end up using this mellow as my white towels. I'm sorry. He's having, um, he's fighting with the bone and stuff. Mellow, keep quiet, please. So anyway, um, kind of give him a little nudge over there. So anyway, I wanted to show you that, okay? I will definitely let you guys know how that towel holds off with the embroidery, okay? Because sometimes a towel, a towel can look good. It looks good quality. but Sometimes when you embroider it, depending on the design that you use, it could probably pucker or something like that. So we just got to check it out and see how that's going to roll, okay? But I will probably do a video on that um, and because I have some new designs that I came up with and I have to start embroidering them and put them on the shop. I definitely want to put the new items out there before Mother's Day hits, okay? Because we are in February. I'm not big on the Valentine's Day thing, you know, even though sometimes people will go and they'll buy the um, this stuff, but they're not big on that. But I do want to show you something else too that I did on my, on my uh, brother 3000. I made myself another shirt, guys. Now, isn't that cute? I, I, this is a towel. This is a new shirt that I did on my Airflow 3000. I love it. Now, I ain't gonna lie. It's a little crooked, okay? So it looks like, you know, I don't know if you guys saw the, uh, you know, what was it with Bill Cosby? Um, you know, the, the Hustables, okay? Where uh, Theo had a shirt, you know, sewn. Um, it's a little similar to to what uh, Lisa Bonet did for for Theo, okay? But it's not that crooked, okay? It's just a little bit crooked and stuff like that. But it's okay for me to wear around the house and stuff like that. So I just have to get a little better on my sewing technique. I think what happened was when I cut my pattern, I didn't really cut it the you know in, in the right angle. Um, and when I sewed, instead of paying attention to not to actually sewing on the edge. I think I kind of cut into the fabric a little bit. So it kind of like did, it kind of like, um, uh, I don't know, deformed the shirt just a little tiny bit, okay? But it's okay, I'll wear it. Um, I like it, okay? So anyway, um, and I know I'm gonna get better in time. This is just my second shirt. And they usually say the more you sew and all that kind of stuff, the better you get. So. Now that I'm talking to you guys about this shirt, it's going back to the story of me and my girlfriend in the store. When she picked up the shirt, she was like, how much is this? So the question of the day was, is it really beneficial for you to go ahead and do sewing and embroidery, okay? So like I said, I came up with 12 things that we can kind of talk among ourselves and, and kind of think about it, okay? Now, one of the things that she asked right off the bat, okay, and I have this all written down right in front of me, do you save money by doing things yourself? Now, think about it. She picked up a shirt, and the shirt was really $29.99. Now, yes, it was on sale, so she may get the shirt for $24.99, and she's got to pay sales tax and all that kind of stuff. When I was buying this shirt, I actually bought two yards of fabric, um, the yards of fabric was for this particular shirt. I think it was, I think I paid like $6.99 a yard, something like that. So I actually paid about maybe 
13 14 dollars okay so to me in the fabric okay i really think that i did save money hold on this is a little loud stop mellow okay he is um he's getting a little loud with that bone and stuff like that come on go go to the room look at him he's he's a mess mellow can you go to the room please can you be quiet? Shh. Thank you. Because we're talking sewing. Okay. All right. Can't buy you bones if you're making all those noise. Okay. So anyway, sometimes you just got to let them know. Okay. So anyway, um, let's go back to the cost. Okay. So I, I buy two yards of fabric. Okay. Um, and it's almost the same as if you pick it off the shelf. Now, it is true that you're going to end up spending time and you know in sewing the shirt and all that kind of stuff and to her thing was it's worth it it's too much trouble is it really worth it to sew your own clothes and i have to be honest my response to her was yeah i think it is worth it and i'm gonna tell you why i feel this way okay i feel this way because you get to pick your fabric when you are sewing your clothes you get to decide how you want to sew it. You get your own pattern and all that kind of stuff and everything. Does it take time to do it? Yes. But you know what? If you're sewing, that means that you enjoy doing it, okay? So to me, it's like I I like doing it. Mellow, come on, cut it out. I actually like doing it. I'm going to kick you out to keep that up. So, um, you know, to, it, it just depends, okay? If you have the extra time to sew and you love sewing it, I would say, yeah. I mean, I sew my own tote bags. I sew my own coin cases. Um, I like to sew, you know, different, you know, things for myself, you know, like little notebooks and stuff. Um, you know, look, I got my own little case right here that I sew. I mean, you know, can you buy these things in the store? Yeah, you can. But the thing is, you're not going to be able to stop it. You're not going to be able to. He is really disturbing me, boy. He is trying my nerves. Ooh, ha. Okay, Mellow, stop. Oh, now he's coming over here. So anyway, stop. Can you please stop? Please, please. Oh. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Oh, enough with the love. Okay. So, um, you know, you get your own, you know, you know, your own fabric. You get to kind of like decide it the way you want. Okay. So, and at the same, at the end of the day, you're kind of proud of it because you made it, you know? So to me, um, is it, is it, do you save money? Sometimes I say you do, sometimes you don't, okay? Because if you buy the fabric and then it really doesn't work out the way it does, you end up with a little twisty shirt like I got right now, um, then I would say, hmm, maybe you should have spent $24 instead of spent buying the fabric. But the thing is, if you don't practice and you don't apply, you're not going to get better. So you can't just like assume that, you know, I'm not going to do it because it's not going to come out right. You know, it's just like embroidery. Sometimes you start to embroider and your embroidery doesn't look exactly too great but then as time goes on you keep practicing practicing before you know it you got it going on you know what i'm saying so you know um so to me my opinion do you save money by doing it yourself i think in the long term yeah you do and you know that's that's just my take but i'd be interested to see what you guys say in the comments about that the other thing, um, what is so great about sewing and doing embroidery? Well, a lot of people say that it is really good for your mental, mental health, okay? And I think it's really true about that. Now, um, this is what happens to me when I am in that zone, and I call it like the sewing and the embroidery zo uh, zone. Now, my husband's watching me. Oh, my God. Stop. Go away. I'm shy. Anyway. Can you take it with you? Melo, you want to go with daddy? You make it a lot of noise. Okay, so anyway. You want to go with daddy? Go with daddy. Go with daddy. Okay, no, he won't, he won't to stay. Huh? He can't hear me? We can't hardly hear him. Oh. Yeah. Well, he didn't say anything. No, when, with the bones, I don't even hear him. Oh, you don't hear him with the bone. Oh, awesome. Okay, my husband said you guys can't hear him messing with the bone okay because you guys know 
he's here messing with the bone. All right, so thanks, thanks, hon. Appreciate it. All right, so cool. All right, guys, because I could hear him because he's all the way in the background. So I'm good. Okay, so reason number two, we already talked about do you save money by doing things by yourself? Okay. We already talked that to death. Let's talk about number two, the mental health. Now I'm going to go back in my zone. I'm going in my embroidery happy hour zone, and I'm going to ignore Mel right now. Okay. Mental health. Um, to me, when I'm sewing and I'm embroidering, I'm kind of like in a zone. Okay. First of all, I enjoy doing it. I really do. And one of the things that I really love about doing it is it's kind of like you got a project that you want to, that you're starting and you're going to end. So what ends up happening is like mentally, I'm like turned on. I'm all into the zone, focused on this project. And what I want to do is I just want to focus on all of the steps and get it done. So to me, it's very like rewarding and it kind of helps you. Um, I find it very soothing. I also um, find it like fun. It's like I'm in my special... Uh, I don't know if I'm, I, I say zone, but I think most of you guys know what I mean. It's like you're in peace, right? You you are doing what you love doing, okay? And you're okay with that. Now, you know, there are some things that can happen that can kind of mess up your zone a little bit, okay? And those are the moments that you have to take out the Peggy, the Peggy uh, Stitch Eraser and the Steam Ripper, and that's when you thought you measured twice, but you only measured once, and then you cut, and then you found out, shoot, I just messed up my fabric, okay? So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, know, I know we have those moments, okay? And that could kind of, like, mess up your zone. But overall, I mean, I think it's really, really cool because it's something that, to me, I find it peaceful, okay? I love sewing when the house is, like, very still um you know i hate saying it it's not that it's not that i don't don't get me wrong i adore my husband love him to death i'll take a bullet for that man okay love him and i love my dog too okay but when the house is still i feel like the house is like in calm mode okay um when i other people are around they're playing very uh radios, they're watching TV, they're laughing, there's a lot of distractions and stuff like that. I kind of like it when the house is still. And when the house is still, I really get into that zone. And that's when I can really do like my YouTube videos. And that's when I do my my embroidery and my sewing and stuff like that. And to me, that's that's really like healthy for me, right? Because I get to like focus and all that kind of stuff. It's really good for your memory as well. It's really good for, you know, your um I want to say your motor skills, but it's really mostly like focusing and using your mind because think about it. I mean, you're, we're not running on a treadmill or anything like that, right? So sometimes my girlfriends tell, tell me you're really not exercising the way you should because you're sitting in that sewing room all day and you're just sewing and stuff. That is kind of true because sewing does require a lot of sitting and embroidery does too. So I could kind of see their point in that, okay? But mentally, I think that sewing and doing embroidery, very, very, very rewarding. The third thing that it that is um, really cool about sewing and embroidery is that at the end, and this is, I think it's true with all of us, at the end of your embroidery project and your sewing project, you have a sense of proudness. I mean, it's there's nothing more satisfying than just taking a piece of fabric, okay, that is just a square, and then sewing it all together, okay, and at the very end, have a really neat twisty, because this is twisty <laughs> shirt, okay, um, it may not be perfect, okay? And I can tell you exactly where some of the twists are in my shirt, but I'm proud of it, okay? So I will wear this twisty shirt very proudly because, you know, I made it, okay? I made it. I did all of the stitching. I did all of the hemming. I did all of the cutting. 
um, and I picked out my fabric. So it's something that you did. So you have a sense of pride that goes with your work, okay? And it's so satisfying too, especially when you create something and someone else sees it and they're like, whoa, that is really nice. Where did you get that? Because right there, you're like, oh, I made it. So it's, it's a sense of proudness that comes with all your projects. So to me, is, it, is sewing and embroidery worth it for that? Absolutely, okay? Now there's another benefit also, number four, when it comes to sewing and embroidery. It is a skill that oh, not only do you do it because you enjoy, you do it because it can save you money in another way. You get to repair items. You have no idea how many times my son has come to me because his shorts got a rip in them, okay? And he's like, he doesn't want to throw them out. They're his favorite pair. I can easily take those shorts, put it on the sewing machine, and I can repair them. His shirts, his jacket, I can replace his zippers. I can, um, his book bag broke, no problem. Let me see where's the rip. I can sometimes, if there's a big hole in it and, you know, it can't be repaired, well, guess what? Because we know embroidery, we know how to embroider patches and we can place a patch over a hole. Sometimes also we can save money by taking our clothes that we have had and we're kind of tired of wearing them because maybe they're out of style. And we seen that with one of the ladies in our Facebook group where um, Wanda, she took a pair of jeans and she embroidered her jeans and they came out gorgeous, okay? So there are so many things that you can do with, um, with sewing and the embroidery regarding repairing and embellishing some of the items that you already have. If you have an old sweater that's just plain, embroider it, embroider the, the corner, embroider the sleeves, embroider the, the ends of your, of your sweater, your jacket, Make it your own, your own style and stuff. You have shirts that are just plain and white. I mean, put a letter on top of it, you know, put mama on it or daddy on it, um, you know, or, or put a nice saying on it. Or just, you know, you see some people go and they'll put mama like just like right on the uh, the collar of the shirt do that. There's just so many things. Okay. So embellish what you have. You can save money by doing that. If you get tired of your wardrobe, well, take your old wardrobe, make it into a new wardrobe by just embellishing what you already have. Okay. Now, number five is something else that I have. And it says, this is something that you always learning about. So much you can do clothing, accessories, items such as backpack, make your own, make your own things, okay? And it is, it's a learning skill, okay? Uh, you're, you learn how to sew, you know, you're learning how to embroider. There are more than one way to sew certain things, okay? How many times do you go on YouTube videos, okay? And you just want to learn how to do an applique. You could probably find so many videos. Everybody has their own style in doing an applique. Um, I went on YouTube to learn how do you make a square, a little square pouch, okay? There were so many different ways on how to square a pouch, okay? How to make it square, how to do the, the corners. I mean, it's like how to put the zipper. Some people put tabs on the zipper and stuff like that. There are so many ways to do things, okay? And it's always learning. So that is one thing that um, that is really great about sewing and embroidery. It is something that you're never going to know it all. You're never going to know it all. There's always going to be a new style. There's always going to be a new technique. I mean, the other day, I, you know, I saw somebody in a restaurant, okay, they had a shirt on and they had lettering on it, but it was puff embroidery. Now, a lot of times you see puff embroidery on baseball hats, okay, you see that a lot on the hats. She didn't have it on the hat, she had it on a shirt. And all I kept thinking was, you know what, she has that on a shirt, you could put that on the back of a jean jacket. Yep, or backpack. 3D puff embroidery on a backpack. Imagine that. Imagine that. So it's like you can really 
really expand your skill. You're always learning. And when you're learning a technique and you apply on one item, that's a technique that you can apply to several items, okay? So it's not just one thing, okay? Just like when um, you see people and they embroider uh, kitchen towels. Well, you can embroider your little dinner napkins and you can embroider placemats. You can embroider table run runners. You can do the pillows. You can embroider... Uh, uh ugh. curtains do curtains jackets backpacks i mean anything anything that you can touch if you you know well i heard somebody say you can hoop it you can embroider it i on the other hand do not kind of agree with that saying because i always say not everything should be embroidered okay and there's a reason why i say that too okay and and i'm just gonna i'm gonna let you guys know now some people may disagree with me, but this is just me, okay? When I embroider something, I don't want to just embroider it for the moment, okay? And what I mean by that is, can you take a piece of fabric, put it under your machine, and embroider it? Yes. Now, should you embroider every piece of fabric that comes into your hands? No. There are several things that you have to think about. You have to think about the quality of that fabric, the thickness of that fabric, and how stiff it is, and if it's going to be able to hold on to those stitches. Now, when you first embroider something, a lot of times it looks great. But what you need to be thinking about as an embroiderer, especially if you are offering this as a business, is how is that product that you embroider going to last long term you have to think long term not just a moment okay the last thing you want to do is to create something you give it to a customer the customer thinks it's so great and then before you know it a week later after they decide to take that product put it in a washing machine or not wash it correctly or whatever it is okay next thing you know you get a bad review because they say oh this is great i mean i got it i got this it was embroidered not long lasting so i wasted all this money so what I mean by not everything should be in border is that you have to make sure that you're thinking about how is this embroidery that I'm going to create on this product going to sustain its life once it leaves my shop, okay? Now, there's a reason why I said that. I remember I like to go through Etsy a lot of times, and sometimes it's not just looking for ideas or looking to see what is being sold and all that kind of stuff. What I usually do, which a lot of people don't do, and this is something I highly recommend people do, is go to Etsy and read people's reviews. Now, a lot of people will always give five-star review. I'm not interested in reading the five-star reviews. Okay, they're happy. They're great. That's fine. Read the one, two, and three-star reviews. And I'm, and, and I'm going to tell you why those reviews are important for you, especially if you are, are selling. And I know I'm a little off topic, but I just I think this is important. I want to share this with you guys, okay? The reason why I say it's very important for you to look at those low reviews is because you want to learn from people's mistakes. You want to know why I have a customer that's coming to pick up an item. Fred got it. Um, you want to know why did they give them that low review okay is it because the quality is it because of the customer service a lot of times when people give a low review there's a reason for it and they're going to put that on the on in their writing in their write-up they're going to say why they're dissatisfied now i'm going to tell you one review that stuck out that i read that really kind of like stayed in my mind and that's why i tell i say not everything should be embroidered okay and if you're going to embroider it, you have to make sure that you're thinking about the long term, all right? How is it going to sustain and how is it going to last, all right? Now, this customer wrote, it's a beautiful shirt. You know, they got it embroidered. I guess it was an embroidered birthday shirt. And it, I guess it was with the number or something like that. And they bought the shirt and they said it was a beautiful shirt when I got it. But after I washed it, I had to throw it out. Now, the chances of, of, you know, when, when I read that, I thought to myself, okay, 
they the obviously the product looked really good when it came to that customer. Obviously, it was packaged very well, and and the, the it, it met its purpose. Okay, you know it. The, the kid wore it for the birthday, but then they couldn't wear it afterwards because when they took it out of the dryer, they said it scrunched. Okay, that it was so scrunched that they had to throw out the shirt. Now, one or two things could have happened. Okay, well. It could have been that when the person embroidered that shirt, they did they used tearaway stabilizer. They did not use cutaway. All right, tearaway dissolves in the the in the wash, and at the same time, it kind of crunches up. And then before you know it, it kind of does distort the embroidery a little bit. So if you are not in embroider by profession, um, you're not going to know how to fix that. Like I would know how to fix it. I would be like, oh, okay, that's fine. I just know that I have to iron it a certain way, which is why I say it's important that you add this to your, to your, uh, your listings. When I when I sell something with embroidery and stuff like that, I always give them this. Okay, it's a care instruction card. All right, this is very very valuable. I really think that you is something that as embroiderers, when we sell this, you have to put this in your package. All right now, this is something that I created for myself. Um, you can Google how to care for embroidery um, designs. Um, write down little notes and everything, then you go ahead and create your own card. I always put this in there so that way the in, the person that purchases the item knows exactly how to care for it. Now, I don't sell that. I don't I don't sell birthday shirts. And so I, I'm not really big into the kid stuff, okay? I'm more into the kitchen towels. That's what I like to sell and the dinner napkins, but it's the same thing. It's embroidery and you have to let make sure that your, your customers know or whoever you give the embroidery to knows how to care for it, okay? So I know I got in a little, little ramp thing, but it's it's a, kind of similar to, um, you know, learning about it. Um, you know, you're always learning about sewing and embroidery, but at the same time that you're learning about sewing and embroidery, you also have to learn how to communicate what you learned and make sure that you apply it so that you have good experiences, especially if you are in the embroidery business, okay? So anyway. I know I little ramped on. Sorry about that. I just wanted to share that with you. Okay. Now, number six, okay. It can challenge your skill set as you do more and learn new ways to do things. Okay. So I kind of already kind of touched on that already. All right. We kind of talked about that. You know, I mean, and you want that. I mean, honestly, you do. You want that. That's really, to me, very, very important. Okay. Um, a lot of times when you do embroidery, sometimes what happens is you you could fall in a category of a comfort zone. What I like about doing local sales is that sometimes the customers will come to me and say, hey, I need something to get embroidered. That challenges my skill set. Okay. When it challenges your skill set, you grow and all that kind of stuff and everything. So, you know, the sewing and the embroidery is you know, your skill is a skill. It really truly is. A lot of times people call the word crafty. <laughs> the word's okay, but I, I gotta be honest. Sometimes I feel like when people use the word crafty, you really don't, I, I feel like people kind of like miss describe what it is that really what, what you do when you're sewing and you're embroidery, okay? Because to me, embroidery and sewing, it is a form of craft. But if you're good, it's a skill. It's really, it's a skill. It truly is, okay? Not everybody can hem pants. Not everybody can fix zippers. Not everybody can create uh, bags and, 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 and stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, it is a skill. It's a, it's, you got to learn how to work with your fabric. You got to learn how to work with the notions. You got to learn how to work with the machine. I mean, you got to you got to have it going on. You got to know what you're doing. All right. So you just, you know, you want you want to be able to challenge your skills and you want to be able to learn. OK, now, number seven, what is another benefit about sewing and embroidery? What I like, OK, is you meet other people. OK, and I love that. And I love that because. I kind of found that in this type of community where it comes to sewing and embroidery, I have met so many great people, people that are willing to share information 
and share different ways that they do things. To me, it's a very um, nourishing community. And I really do like that. You know, even through this channel, I have made some really great friends, you know, um, you know, and I've met some really great people. And, you know, I mean, I've learned so much, not, you know, from from people that I have been interacting with through the YouTube channel, through the Facebook group, um, people that I've met um, at the sewing shop by my home. You know, I mean, it's, it really is a neat community and it's a great place. You know, it, it's, it's a, not, not a place, but it's, it's a great it's a great um, activity that we're that you do, even if you do it as a hobby. OK, if you don't really do sewing and embroidery to 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 do retail and so it's it's you know it's a great hobby it's something that you know you um you know that 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 is really really cool and you get to meet different people and you get to learn different things okay so that is number 7 that's what i have number 7 on the list let's talk about 18 okay now this is also um to me sewing and embroidery is kind of like what this is why i kind of got into it okay the transition into retirement um, for you guys that have been watching me for quite some time, you guys know I am ready to retire in 2026. That's my year, okay? I hope that I reach that year and I hope that I pass that year and that I have the moment that I get to retire, okay? Um, I already know my date. It'll be March 13th, 2026. It'll be three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to just take my pocketbook and disappear, okay? Now, I may even have to call out sick that day because I might be too excited. So I may not even make it to the last day. I'll probably just go in there to hand in my badge and go see you later, you know? So I don't know. But that is my date. And I plan on meeting that day and I plan on retiring. So I want to transition into that. The reason why I really got into the sewing and border is, is because I know a lot of people that have worked for a very long time. When they hit retirement, they really don't know what to do. At the very first time, what ends up happening is first you hit retirement and, and everybody gets excited. They're like, I'm retired. I'm done. I don't need to see these people anymore. I don't care about the task. I don't care about the workload. I don't have to get up early in the morning. I don't have to beat the traffic. I mean, they're happy as heck, okay? Very, very, very happy. But then what ends up happening is after like month, I would say month two or three, they start looking around the house and they get a little bored, okay? And then they're like wondering, what am I gonna do with myself, okay? And I have seen a lot of people at my job retire and then a couple of months back, they're back. They're just back. I mean, they just show up. I'm like, I'll sit in my cubicle and I look and I'm like, you're back? You're there? Why? What happened? And that's like, and you know, it goes through my mind, what, what are you here for? Are you broke? I mean, like, what happened? You know, but they're bored. They're just bored. And I made that decision because I have seen too many of them, too many leave and come back and some let me tell you i got to the point where you know when they have those retirement parties at work before i go i ask the person i tell them don't get mad but i want to know do you plan on coming back because i don't want to like spend time making all this retirement gifts and then you come back you know what i'm saying so let me know if you sure you really retiring or you're gonna come back you know because i'm like I mean, because sometimes when I see them come back, I tell them I want to get my retirement gift back. You know, <laughs> like, what the heck? So anyway, I don't want to be one of these people. When I am gone, I am gone, okay? I forgot everything, all my knowledge and skill set to the toilet. I don't care. I mean, like, what? How I ran those numbers, how I did that report, the laws and regulations, the policy. I don't know. I know nothing. Nothing. I want nothing, Okay. I just want to come here and I want to do my embroidery. I want to do my sewing. Now, last week, me and Liliana were talking, right? And one of the things that she was asking, she goes, yeah, I know you're going to retire in three years. I said, yeah. She goes, well, where do you want to take what you're doing at the next level? And I told her right now, and, and I, I still say it, 
right now I'm pretty unsure of where I want to take all of this. Okay. Um, I do know that the Etsy shop has been pretty successful. I enjoy doing what I'm doing. I love making the dinner napkins. I love making the kitchen towels. I really, the home decor section is really my thing. I love doing that kind of stuff. Okay. Now, will I keep doing Etsy? I might. I, I think I might. I mean, I, so far, it's been a joy. I love it. I, I think it's a lot of fun. I do love embroidering. I do love sewing and all that kind of stuff. Now, do I see myself um, having a storefront like Liliana, um, you know, and doing like mega orders and stuff like that? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not there yet. I might. You never know because I may have nothing else to do. So I'll say, okay, I'll embroider 100 shirts. Why not? You know? Um, but I, I guess I'll see when the time comes. Right now, I really am just enjoying the journey. And I'm just going to continue this and keep doing the channel because I really love doing the channel because I love helping people. And I'm just going to do my thing. So, you know, is it a benefit doing the sewing and embroidery for my situation? Absolutely. Because if you are close to retirement or something like that, or even if you want to do like a little side hustle or something like that, you know, because maybe money's a little tight and you do have a sewing machine at home or you have an embroidery machine at home. Hey, do your thing. Do You know, I mean, why not? You know, so I really think that it can be a, a good lucrative thing to do on the side you know so you know i mean it's just something that i like to do now let me see what else do i have here because that was number eight the transition and doing a little side hustle okay number nine okay this is something yeah and i kind of just said that it gives you time for yourself to do something that you love to do and honestly i kind of like that part okay i am not really much of a crowd person when it comes to certain tasks okay i've been at work at those team meetings okay where all of a sudden everyone's supposed to be working like a team and then you see one person wants to turn left the other person wants to turn right and i'm sitting there at the at the desk like okay let me know who wins the fight and then i'll just go wherever you know <laughs> i mean it's like you see all this stuff like a lot of chaos and all that kind of stuff I actually enjoy alone time. I really, truly do. I do like it. And when you are sewing and when you're embroidering, it is a kind of like a serene moment where you have your alone time. So um, that to me is very beneficial because it does help with mental health as well because you're more relaxed, you're enjoying it and all that kind of stuff. So sewing and embroidery is something that can really be beneficial in that area. Okay. Now let me see what else I got. Number nine, it says, as you get better, your confidence grows. You feel good to see what your skills, you, you know, what you can do and how your skill set is improving. Very, very, very true. Okay. In the very beginning, and I even hear it from a lot of subscribers and even people in our Facebook group where they get a machine. And I've even know people out there that had gotten their, their embroidery machine, especially like the Brother SC 1900, or people that wanted a Motino machine or a bigger uh, flatbed machine or even a, a more you know advanced sewing machine. And what happens is a lot of times they don't have that confidence and it stops them, okay? I've even heard people of, well, I bought the machine and it's still in the box get it out of the box people okay you can do this all right but as soon as they do get it out of the box and i always tell people don't feel like you have to turn that machine on and that you gotta you know you you gotta go a mile a minute take it slow do baby steps learn the machine piece by piece take little small projects okay get your little accomplishments in as you do these small little projects and you start finishing them off, and as you start to understand the machine and learn the machine, what's gonna happen is, of course, you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna learn from those mistakes. You're gonna learn about putting the bobbin in correctly, threading your machine correctly, 
um, you know, why certain things happen in the machine, like bird nesting, maybe your tension is off and you have to now adjust the tension on your embroidery machine. Those are all skills that you have to build anyway. And as you are a beginner, it can get intimidating, okay? Because, you know, I have had people that they bought the machine, they, they you know, they call me, they send me a text, I video with them, and then I tell them, okay, let me see the machine. And a lot of times, you know, I, I'm able to fix it for them. And then they're like, oh, you're, you're, you're so good at fixing it. Well, I've been doing it for a long, long time, you know, and I tell them. As you, as you keep playing with your machine and you keep, you know, working with your machine, you're going to get just as good. You're going to learn about tension. You're going to know how to adjust your tension. You're going to know about the bird's nest and you're going to know about your bobbin and how to really thread your, your machine very well. You know, you're going to know about the different um, types of thread, the different weights of thread and so forth and whatever, and you're going to get better. And your confidence level is going to grow. And when it starts to grow, what's going to happen is you're going to be more eager to take more challenging projects because you're going to be like, okay, now I mastered the, how to do dinner napkins. Very easy, very simple, okay? Now I want to do baby onesies. Now maybe I want to do blankets. Maybe now I want to do book bags. Maybe now I want to take a stuffed bunny and I want to embroider the ears of the bunny and start learning all these different things. So, you know, you are, you're, you're going to start challenging yourself more and you're going to end up building your self-confidence. So sewing and embroidery is a great way to do that. It is really a good way to build your self-confidence and so that you can grow and really feel good about yourself. Okay. So now 11, improving your memory. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of things. Um, a lot of times people say the older you get, you know, um, you have to do certain things, keep the mind going, right? Um, and you see a lot of times, um, I know my mom, she was really big in doing puzzles. She would do like uh, the little search word puzzle. And she does a lot of the um, crochet. She loves to crochet. Okay, she's not much of a knitter. I know knitting is the two needles. She does the one. So she does the crocheting and stuff like that. Now, the crocheting is really funny because when you watch her, right, you kind of think that it's just her moving a needle all the way around. Well, actually, when people crochet, they do a lot of counting and especially knowing the design that they're doing and where they're going to place that that um, that needle and how they're going to thread it and stuff. There's a lot of counting involved. So that kind of really keeps your mind sharp, okay? And um, sewing and embroidery is another way to do it, all right? Because you have to know how to set up those machines. You have to know how to cut the thread, you know, the, the type of thread and the needle that you need and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you're sewing, um, you're selling, you, you got to know how, how, how to price your products and all that kind of stuff and everything. But anyway, it's really good for your mind, exercising your mind. So it's, it's really good at that. Now, the other thing that I really love about sewing and embroidery is the ability to give back to your community, okay? Um, there are several ways that you can use sewing and embroidery to do that. Some people do a bunch of sewing and embroidery. They create stuff for their church. Sometimes they create them to give to shelters. A lot of times people do that for gift giving during the holidays. Um, and sometimes a lot, you know, I, I know one thing that I do is if I hear of a situation like with a neighbor or something like that, like I know right now I have a girlfriend that um, she broke her ankle. So she she's in a wheelchair and, you know, and um, well, I'm going to embroider her a blanket, you know, so <laughs> it's a nice little gift, you know. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that that you can do with that skill set to give back to the community. You can teach, okay? You can go to your sewing um, shop near you and you can ask the owner, hey, I would like to host a, a, a class to teach someone how to do quilting, how to do knitting, how to do sewing, how to do embroidery. There's so many things that you can do to give back to the community, okay? Now, there is another side note though that I wanna add to all of this because um, Liliana did a live today and there was one person in there that made a comment. Um, it wasn't a bad thing. It was uh, something that I think you've heard me say this before. Okay. Now the, the, 
the thing was, Leanne was saying that, you know, you got to make sure that you price your embroidery accordingly. And you guys have always heard me say that as well. Um, one of the things that I always say, because, you know, everyone has their own way of pricing things. All right. I believe in being fair. That's how I describe my style. OK, it's about being fair, being fair to the customer, because, of course, my my um. My intention is not to rob you of your money, but at the same time that I am trying to be, you know, fair to you, I have to make sure that I am fair and respectful to myself as well. Now, this particular person commented that sometimes they put the price and the person says it's too high and they always try to lower the price. OK, so to me, I my response to that was I don't haggle my prices at all okay and i i kind of like told him i you have to be careful because people there are people out there that will take advantage of you now i know that i'm talking about the benefits of sewing and embroidery but i also want to just mention just one big disadvantage that i think there is when it comes to the skill set Unfortunately, there are people out there that will take advantage of you, okay? You have to be smart, know that they're trying to take advantage, and cut it. Just stop it, cut it to the knees. I'm telling you, cut it to the knees. I do it all the time, and I don't, it doesn't bother me, okay? It's all really, at the end of the day, about respect. It's about you respecting them, and they respecting you, okay? Do not, do not do stuff. And then at the end of the day, you feel bad about it. Though you feel like, damn, you know, I did all that work and I don't feel appreciated and stuff like that. Make sure that, you know, you are, you know, pricing things where you feel comfortable. Okay. And if you see that someone haggles, honestly, my advice, it's not worth it for the simple fact that if you allow them to haggle you your price once chances are they're going to do it again chances are they're going to let other people know that they can do that and then before you know it you're always being challenged every time you price something okay so you don't want that you want to be able to feel good about what you're doing not feel bad about it because that's the whole reason why you're doing what you're doing so don't allow people to ever make you feel bad because you gave them a fair price okay it is what it is and if they to me if somebody you know if somebody say something smart like well then i'll go somewhere else wish them well wish them well i'm serious i've done it i've done it i had a lady that came to me once she said she had a um, hundred shirts she wanted this big fancy thing on it and I gave her a price and then she said, oh, that's a lot of money. I know somebody that can do it for half. Okay, go to them. Don't bother me, go. And then a couple of months later, she came back and I said, mm -mm. I'm touching that order. You know why? Because it's, it's uh, I just didn't feel right. It didn't feel good, okay? Because I, I don't want problems. I don't like problems problems <laughs> really don't and it's a it's a respect thing it, it really truly is i mean i know some people have had said well jeanette i would have did it anyway I, you know she came back maybe she just found out that your price was you know, she no it was the way the conversation took place you know what i'm saying because i you know this is how i look at it when i put in a price and i talk to the customer i let them know the process i explain everything okay you got something with a lot of stitches. That is very dense. I have to use mixed weight thread, okay? Some of your design is 40 weight. Some of that has to be 60 weight. I have to use different size needles, okay? There's a lot of color changes in that. Um, you know, you got to think about the time, okay? One shirt would have took an hour and you're asking for 100. No, no, no. I was like, mm-mm not worth it it's not worth it sometimes things are not worth it and even after knowing all that information half price 
girl, go for it. Go over there and get half price. I know the quality of work that I do. I know, you know, I know what I'm all about. I mean, who knows? Maybe that person offered half price, but they do crappy work. You don't know. You don't know. Or they thought that's the price they should. And then after they calculated, they probably said, no, we can't do it at that price. I don't know what the situation was. All I know is that I thought the lady was a little uh, rash or whatever, you know? And I was like, mm, no, mija, not this one. I'm not no fool. So I just said, nope, I'm not doing it. All right. So I've mentioned all 12, okay, of why should you do embroidery and uh, sewing and what the benefits are. And I also gave you that little side note of the disadvantage, okay? Just be very careful with that disadvantage. I don't want any of you guys to be taken advantage of because um, I know you guys work just as hard as I do in um, trying to learn your craft and everything. Don't let people take that from you. Seriously, do not, do not. If you work really, really hard, it's your thing. Um, don't don't let anybody um, devalue you or or your skill set. Seriously, because that that can be very, very, um, very bad. Okay, I am going to because oh. Oh my goodness. Hold on. I think I lost you. There you go. Sorry. Sorry. I hit a button. Sorry. I hope I hope I didn't lose you guys. You guys are probably like, uh, not all money is good money. Yes, Debbie. And that's what I say too. That all money is good money. So that's why you shouldn't have to do that. You know, don't mess around with that. Don't, don't you remember, this is your happiness. This is your happiness. You're supposed to be happy. There is no reason for it, for you to allow anybody to upset you in any way, shape, or form. None. None. So why? Why allow them in your zone, in your space? That's just me. That's just me. I know. Sounds a little crazy, but okay. All right. So I am going to go through the chat, say hi to everybody like I always do because I think I am close to, yep, it's nine o'clock. So now I just want to answer any questions and stuff like that. Say hi to all you guys. And so I see Sassy on here. I'm ready for another machine. Oh, another interesting, oh, a machine embroidery class. Hey, Sassy. I'm sorry. Oh. Ooh, I'm having my moment. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready for another interesting and informative machine embroidery class. Believe me, I am working on those videos and stuff. Hey, Robin. How you doing? Hey, Miss Max. Hey, Alma. Hey, I, Miss Green. How are you? Hey, Judy. How are you doing? Hey, Marlene. Hey, Guinea. How are you? I see Cheryl, Marlene, uh, Marilyn. Hey, Nancy, Guess HQ. Hey, Miss Banks, how are you? I mentioned you today and stuff. I got my good fabric. <laughs> hey, J Love, how you doing? Hey, Jackie. I see Eartha. Hey, Iris, how are you? Hey, Annette. I see Susan. Hey, Miss Lady D, how you doing, hon? Hey, Eartha, how are you? I see Karen. Oh, Michelle. Oh, yes. Okay, Michelle said they are a great company out in Las Vegas. I have ordered from them through their shows as well as visiting their physical store. They're Fabric is well made at a good price. Oh, Michelle, yes, you know, because they do sell. Yeah, they are in Las Vegas, and it's called So Yay, and they have a YouTube channel. It's a YouTube channel. That's how you actually buy the the fabric through YouTube. So yes, Michelle, this is was my first time ordering from them, and I have to tell you, I love the. It's really good fabric. This is really good quality fabric, and I. Like I said, I, I am definitely going to be a repeat customer for them. I really, really am. That is really good quality and good for you that you like, you live close by that you could actually visit their store. Cause I mean, I could just imagine if that was the fabric that they show online, I can only imagine what they have in the store as well. Cause they got beautiful fabrics and they sell um, five, five yard cuts 
uh, one yard cuts. They sell bundles. I mean, it, it really is cool. It really is. And stuff. Um, let me see. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Hey, Alexis, how you doing? Your videos helped me so much with getting started with embroidery. I love it. Oh, that's so awesome, Alexis. Have fun with your machine. Have fun with it. I remember when I first got it, my husband was a little worried because I was embroidering like everything in the house. Okay. I was like looking around for, you know, at blanks everywhere. And then I was looking at curtains and the bedrooms. And he was kind of like, oh God, she's gonna, she's gonna embroider our foreheads, you know? <laughs> Cause it's just so much fun. It's addicting. It truly, truly is. It's so, so addicting and stuff. Hey, Miss Lady D. Hey, Karen. Um, I need to try. Yes, their fabrics are really nice. Also, a lot of you guys have heard of them and stuff. Yeah. Hey, Crafty Puerto Rican. How you doing? Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I, you guys, if, if you guys have not checked them out, I recommend you do. I even subscribe to their channel and I made sure I hit that notification bell so that I could always know when they're going to have no fabrics on it because they really had some beautiful fabrics and the good, good quality, like Miss Banks, you know, like taught me, you know, that's one of the things that when we went to the sewing quilt show, she was like, she had me feeling the fabrics and she was like, that's how you can tell and the thickness of it. Okay. And then what's so funny was after she showed me what good quality fabric feels like. You know, and like I said, it's, I don't want to. It's not that I'm saying that Joanne and, and Hobby Lobby is no good, but or you know, but when you go into Walmart or you go to other stores and then you feel the fabric, you kind of this is so super thin. So it's like I understand. <laughs> I totally understand the 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 fabric. And then they, even in my sewing shop, because I there's a sewing shop called Susie's Quilt Quilt Shop out Manassas, Virginia, and I shop there a lot. And when I go to her sewing shops, her fabric is a little more expensive, but it's excellent quality fabric. I mean, it, it, I really could, now that, you know, Ms. Banks showed me about the, the feeling of the, the fabric. Now it's like, every time I look at fabric, I'm always like doing the field test, you know? And, you know, I'm looking at the price and then I'm doing the field test and, I, and I'm like, oh, it's like thin, you know, it's like, and, and then it goes to my cheap fabric. Then I have to think about, okay, okay. Um, and I'm not saying that that fabric's no good, but the thing is, it may not be appropriate for all types of projects. Okay. So like, for instance, let's say I want to do a tote bag to carry grocery items or something like that. You may not want a paper thin fabric for that, okay? You may want something that's a little sturdier, thicker, so that it can be more long lasting, you know? So it depends on what it is that you want to make. So that's why sometimes, you know, it's important for you to, to look at that, you know? So, and that's something that you, you learn in time. Like, like I said, I didn't know that until I met Miss Banks and I picked her up and we went to the quilt, uh, sewing quilt expo and she showed me around and then she was like, feel this fabric. And then, then it's like, it dawned on me. So it's something that you learn as, as you become more and more experienced on it. It's kind of like learning about good thread versus bad thread. I bought some thread that has been really, really good. And then I see some other thread that I bought online that I thought, oh, this is pretty inexpensive. Then when I got it, it had so much lint, okay? I mean, it just, you know, you could just tell. It just, it wasn't, it, it, it was cheap thread. It was really cheap thread, okay? So when, because I have this cheap thread, I have to think about when I use the thread, you know, I'm obviously, I'm going to use it for some projects. I'm not going to use it for some other projects. You know what I mean? You got to think about these things, you know, think about the quality of your fabric, the quality of your thread, and then you can kind of like understand where you would go ahead and, um, you know, get those. Okay. Uh, Miss Max said, where did she get these? Okay. I, it's called, um, so yeah, I'm going to put that in the chat, okay? So I put it in the chat 
Miss Mac, Miss uh, Miss Max, that's where I actually bought the uh, the fabric from. Okay, just look them up on YouTube and stuff, and you'll see it. And they have all these lives and stuff, and then they even have uh, days where they have the brand new styles of fabric. And I think they do eleven ninety nine a yard or something like that for that. Um, but they're new, so they're they're pretty good. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? I think I, I kind of went up a little bit. Okay, nope, okay, I got it. Okay, um, let me see what else I got in here. Um, okay, and then Miss Banks says, yes, both are worth it to me. I have been sewing over 53 years and I have been embroidering for over 35 years. See, that's why I hang out with Miss Banks. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Banks, Miss Banks got the 411. I'm telling you, I we need to do an embroidery happy hour with her one day. I'm telling you, one of these days, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna pick her up and bring her over and stuff. And I'm gonna be like, come on, Miss Banks, let's do an embroidery happy hour together. I mean, she's got the 411. I'm telling you, she's she's good, Lillian's good. I'm telling you, you gotta go where the people got the experience. Experience. I'm telling you that. I mean, look at all those years she got 53 years sewing, 35 years in bordering. And I remember Miss Banks, Miss Banks was talking to me last week. And I hope you don't mind if <laughs> me sharing this, Miss Banks. But you remember the cricket machine? You know, the cricket machine that a lot of people have now. You know, right now it's like on the, um, you know, they, they have design space. So you go online and you can design your stuff and everything. Well, Miss Banks has been using the Cricut machine since it first came out. And she has cartridges. And one of the things that she also shared with me is in the beginning of embroidery back then, right? People actually talk about, you know, she said, we talk about the expense of embroidery. She says, actually, she finds that embroidery today is much more inexpensive than it was back in the day because now you can actually go online you can buy all these different embroidery days well when she first started doing embroidery you could not just go out there and buy all these embroidery files which i didn't know she said you had to buy these cartridges and the cartridges had embroidery designs that you would actually put into the machine the machine would go ahead and embroider so with that being said i bet you she probably did not have maybe software that can help her merge embroidery designs, just like how we have in Brilliance today or in, in, um, and So What Pro and all these other embroidery software. Back in the day, I think things were a little bit more difficult and you were probably a little more limited in what you could do in embroidery. Um, you know, and now when you got to get something digitized, there are a lot of companies out there that will digitize designs for you. And there are even a lot of independent digitizers, like the guy that I use, Fossil, that would actually digitize stuff. And I bet you back in the day, if you needed something digitized, it probably cost a lot more and it probably wasn't as easy to do either. So, you know, I mean, she's talking from years of experience. So she obviously, you know, I can't say anything because I don't know how it was back then. Back then in the day, I could only imagine it had to be more complicated, you know, um, but it was really cool having the conversation with her and, and learning how things were so different back then than how it is now. Because even when I, I have a video from, I think about a year or a year and a half ago when I went to visit my mom and I started looking at the sewing machine that she had at her house which is 55 years old and when i look at her machine um and i and i did a review of it i have to tell you i'm like wow i'm i'm amazed because it's a 55 year old machine still works um and it's like steel it's heavy as hell steel it's not like now now that's not true though because I'm looking at my Juki, and my Juki is mostly a steel machine. There is some plastic, but very little. But when you looked at my mom's sewing machine that was 55 years old, um, and I think it was in England or something like that, um, that machine is rock solid, heavy, 
I mean heavy. And it, it comes in a built-in sewing cabinet. They don't have them like that anymore, okay? Now you buy the machine and you got to go and buy a table and, or make a table or something for your machine. Back then, when you bought a sewing machine, it came with its built-in sewing cabinet. I mean, it was just amazing. So a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things that have changed from back then to now. And it's pretty interesting. Um, I wonder if they have a sewing uh, museum that would be you know I'm gonna google that they have a sewing museum maybe they have it somewhere that would be pretty cool to visit to see how things were done back then and how this this skill has progressed through time that would be a very interesting thing to see um is it cotton good for quilting yes Karen this is cotton it's all 100% cotton it is good for quilting and I noticed that a lot of people on their were quilters and um yeah no this is like it, it's very good um fabric karen i really i, I they're, they're good i mean they really are um what is the price well okay the price for um for each of these um it was uh i believe it was 5.99 yard or 6.99 yard something like that so for like three of these which this is a uh, three one yard cuts okay um it was eighteen dollars for three so to me that that wasn't bad you know it wasn't a bad price um i think the prices to me um alba was very very reasonable i didn't i didn't find it like you know really high now naturally because they do it on youtube and stuff like that <laughs> i'm not gonna come on and say hey you offer military discount you know um, and, you know, it's not like Joann's that they have little coupons and all that kind of stuff, you know, it's just, this is how much it is. And it was like a $5, uh, flat rate shipping. And if you bought five, if you have five orders or more, um, then you have free shipping. I mean, you know, and I had one, two, three, four, I had four orders. And if I would have, I didn't keep track of all the orders that I won. Okay. So and I should have did a fifth one and gotten free uh, shipping, but that's okay. Um, I don't want to end up with all this fabric in the house. You know, I'm, I'm trying to minimize a little bit, but uh, yeah, I got I got to start cracking. I got to start um, doing some sewing and embroidering projects and stuff now so that I have all this fabric and everything. Um, hey, Sarah, how are you? Um Margie said, I got addicted to buying their fabric every week. Now I have shelves of Q fabric. I shop in my closet now when I start a new fat, a new project. Yeah, Margie, you know, and, and I ain't gonna lie. You. I mean, that is, it is addicting. She's got a good point because what happens is they start showing this fabric and then you're in the chat room and you'll be on a roll. You'll be like, oh, I'll take that. I'll take that. I want that one. I want that one. Next thing you know, you got a whole bunch of fabric you just bought. It gets a little addicting. So I totally, you know, Marge, yeah, I, I had to watch, I had to watch that too. So that's why I kind of stopped at four. And then I said, I'm not going to watch anymore because if I don't see any cute fabric, I'm not going to buy the cute fabric. Okay. Because if you stay watching, the next thing you know, you're going to buy, you know? So yeah. Um, what's the name of the fabric show? Hey, Miss Lady. Okay, it's um, it's so yeah. I put the name on their YouTube channel on the chat. Okay, so go to their channel and you'll see it. it. I mean, there's two days a week that they do it, and they do like a live show. Okay, look in their channel, and I'm sure they have a description on it. As a matter of fact, what I will do is the next time they go live to sell fabric, I'll post it on the Facebook group so you guys know. Okay um when they're selling the fabric but yeah it, it was it was a pretty good price you know um let's see love my christmas elfster gift thank you so much ah let me see the price varies it's best to wash them there you go michelle got the info right there the price is best to wash them let me let me highlight i'm gonna highlight her to watch them on Tuesdays and Saturday nights when they explain everything. Yeah. And and totally, I am telling you, they're really, really good. They, I mean, the I, I really, and you know, they got a good gig. They really got a good gig. Because I was like, you know, that is so smart. They are going on YouTube 
and they're just selling their fabrics. They're just selling their fabrics. I'm like, shoot, they they are they're doing pretty good. Very smart. That was a very clever, very, very, very clever way of selling fabrics. My hat is off to them, man. That see, that is thinking out of the box. Truly. That that is very good, very well uh business plan, well thought out. Well, well thought out. Um Hi by Angeli Marie. You entered, I had to leave. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Angelia did uh a little uh a little a little uh, lie today. Oh, let's say Jeanette, try the road hem with the same thread that you used on a 1034 because you used the white thread, and I found that there's a difference in the white thread. Thank you. Okay, then you know what? I am going to do that because maybe you're right. Maybe um, they are, those threads are a different brand. They are a different brand. So it could be that there is something different between those two. So I am going to try that, Miss Banks. Thank you. Because, um, yeah, because as you can see, the, the gold thread looked really nicely. And that thread came from Thread Art. The white thread, I bought that from Joann's. Okay, so I think you might have a point there. It could be the quality of the thread is different between the two, and maybe that's why. So maybe what I should have did was put thread art thread on both of those machines and then did the test. So I am going to try that. And now that, you know, it's easy to to thread the, the Airflow 3000. So I am going to try it and stuff. Um, Nancy says she's got the same issue, so much fabric, little time. Oh, thank you, Eartha. Yes, that is their YouTube channel, So Thread. Um, she got it from, yep. Hey, Veronica, how are you? Yeah, I gotta share. I gotta share the four one one with you guys. So whenever I find, and that is one thing you'll always see that I will always do when I find a really good deal, or if I find something of that's really good quality and stuff like that, I'm always gonna share it. I'm always gonna share it because I'm like, shoot, I mean that's good fabric, and and this is the other thing that I kind of like about that is. You know, when you go to Joann's and you go to Hobby Lobby and all that kind of stuff, like I said, you know, it's not that I want to say bad things about these because I go, I shop there too, okay? So don't think that I'm like, you know, oh my gosh, she bashes. No, it's not that. I shop there too. I'm just bringing out a little point, okay? The thing is, when you go to one store, chances are that fabric, because it's a commercial store, Right? And they're all over the U.S. So if you're in New York and you pick out that fabric, and especially if you're into sales or something like that, um, it's important for your items to be unique. Okay, you really want your items to be unique. So if you if you buy that fabric from in New York, and then someone in um, I don't know in Tennessee goes to the same store and they can buy the fabric and someone in Florida can buy the same exact fabric and someone in Georgia and California or whatever, then the uniqueness is not there, right? So one of the things that I kind of like about going to different um, sewing shops, like going to the one locally where I, I live and shopping in um, things like this, okay? Or like when I visit my sister in Florida, one of the things that, you know, she she kind of knows, she she doesn't even have to ask. She already knows, what do you want to do, Jeanette? I want to go to a sewing shop. I want to look for fabrics because I like going to, and I, and I don't want to do commercial fabric shopping. I want to go to the small mom and pop shops. I want to go to the small sewing shops because they sell unique stuff their fabrics is unique their fabrics is sometimes better quality and you have to unique styles and that's what i kind of like i like the uniqueness you don't want to make what everybody else is making using the same fabric okay you want to be unique that's the whole 
thing about this whole thing. Well, at least for me, okay? Um, you know, if I make a shirt, I want it to be a unique shirt. So I don't know. It's just how I am. So anyway, you know, you guys got my point, right? So <laughs> you want to be different. And so Sarah says, love the fabric. I also do quilting. I'm a beginner in embroidery. Oh, that's great. I really like their fabric too. I really do. And um, yeah, and I could just see, I, I think I'm going to do probably a tote bag or two with some of this fabric and stuff. I don't know. We're going to see. Um, and then I was also thinking of using some of that fabric to do stuff like this, okay? Um, making little notebooks or, you know, doing different stuff with it. So I'm, you know, I, I'm still looking at different projects that I can do. Um, another thing that I was thinking about too is um, doing kitchen towels. I know that me and Miss Banks talks about doing in the hoop kitchen um, towel um, toppers. Um, I have to really look into that. I want to do the in the hoop one. And I was thinking that some of this fabric, especially the one with the avocado on it, that would probably be really, really cute on the top of one of the towels, you know, um, you know, yeah. So I want to really start getting into doing uh, towel toppers and all that kind of stuff and everything, because I think that would be a lot of fun and it would add some uniqueness to some of the stuff that I already sell and stuff. So, um, yeah. Uh, please post a video embroidering those new towels. I would love to see how they turn out. I will. Alex uh, Alexis, I will be doing that. I don't know how it's going to turn out. This is a different texture. It's a uh, microfiber. Um, so, yeah. So, um, it is going to, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I am hoping that it works out because like I said, I'm always looking for better blanks. Like the blanks that I use on the kitchen towels work great, which is um, Cotton Craft. And they do work great. But sometimes you want to look for other substitutes too because I did run into the problem that sometimes they run out, okay? And when they run out or they run low, then, and you need to replenish your inventory. Sometimes you can't, like I just noticed the last couple of days, they didn't have the white ones, which is why I said, I need to go on the hunt and find an alternative, okay? Which is why I ended up getting these. Now I did buy another pack of kitchen towels um, that looked a little similar, uh, but as soon as I opened up, the amazon box and i looked at it i didn't even open up the bag i didn't have to open up the bag so you could you can tell low quality towels you can tell they looked thin and i was like oh my god i don't even think those towels will hold a stress stitch, a, a straight stitch so i was like i'm not even gonna bother with it i'm not gonna you know they're going back so those are being returned okay now these on the other hand when i opened up the box um, the first thing I noticed right off the bat was the heaviness of the pack of towels, okay? The other ones that I, I'm going to be returning, they were very, very light, and you could just tell the, the thickness was not there. And, and you know, you, you kind of know, you know, when you've been embroidering for quite some time and you know your designs, you know what, what kind of fabric would, would go well with those designs, you kind of know what towels are going to work and what towels are not. And those towels were definitely not going to cut the mustard. So, of course, you know, they're going back. This, on the other hand, when I held the bag, they were kind of heavy. And then I gave it a good look. And I was like, you know, they look pretty good. So I said, you know, worse comes to worse. Um, if they're not good for embroidery, I could use them. I could use them. Okay, they're not going to go to waste. So, but they really look like a good quality towel. So I think this will be an alternative for me to use if I can't find my cotton, my cotton craft, cotton, cotton craft. Yeah, they're called cotton craft towels. Those are the ones that I usually use. But like I said, you should always have a backup. Okay. Um, let me see. Miss Banks says, "Oh, the micro." Oh, wow. Okay. So she says microfiber holds up well with embroidery, but you cannot take hot things from the oven with microfiber because they will burn. 
I had one burn on with me. Oh, last week. Okay. So then if that's the case, then um, I would. Mm. All right. Well, I will have to make sure that I include this information in the listing when people buy it. Um, I will have to make sure that I, I disclose that to them, that this is not something for hot. But, you know, a lot of times my kitchen towels and, and I do say it, I, it's the core items. It, my, my kitchen towels are not really, you know, they're, they're for decoration. Okay. They really, truly are. Or oh, I hope that's what people are using them for. We'll see. And so, hey, Susan, how are you? Hey, Deborah. Hey, Quinty. Oh my God, Jeanette, I have a package of those exact towels delivered today. Oh, Sandra, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see how they hold up, won't we? <laughs> hey, Sandra, how you doing? Um, I don't sell cloths. I quilt and I make throws. I also do eat embroidery. Oh, that shirt is gorgeous. We can't tell that it's crooked. I would wear it to work. <laughs> How do you know it's crooked? You can't tell because the fabric has a pattern. Yeah, I mean, it, but it is it is crooked though. It is, it is crooked. Um, but you are, but you know what, J J Love. I mean, um, yeah, you you're right. I mean, and this is the other thing too. If you look really closely, um, I need a lot of practice with the um, the 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 neckline, as you can see right here um see how it kind of crunched up right there that's not supposed to be there that little crunch right here see and you know what happened there was that um and you can see the that it's misaligned see how it's it's big it's big on some areas right it's big here and then it kind of like right here in this area it's small let's see if you could tell see so it's not exactly a perfect, but I'll wear it. I mean, you know, I, I'll wear it. I mean, it's, I like the fabric. I think the fabric is cute. It'll go with a lot of things, you know? Um, and I got um, more yardage of another fabric that was a little similar design than this, but just a different color. And I'm gonna make another one. And you know, these are pretty easy to make. I got the um, sewing pattern from Ellie and Mac. Um, the sewing pattern was pretty cheap. Sometimes they have the sales and stuff like that. So you just wait for the sales. I think only pay seven bucks, but it's just a, a, a simple everyday t-shirt sewing pattern. Um, and I did it with my serger and you see, this is what I love. See how the serger came out. I mean, and you could tell, see, I'm not really perfect on anything, but Hey, it worked. Um, my uh hem line is not exactly a uh, to par either i mean you know it should be like that but eh, it, it it works it works okay um like i said i just gotta practice some more and i know that the more i practice the better that i'll get and then i'll probably like start sewing some i don't know making some scarves or something like that you know some little wrap around infinity scarves and so you know make other stuff but uh, yeah, I mean, I really want to start getting into the clothes and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, because save money, you know. <laughs> um, let me see. I actually love sewing my own clothes, especially um, because I get exactly what I want and the colors and fabrics I want. Yeah, Miss Miss Banks, that's the whole reason why I want to start doing that, you know. Oh, maybe pre-cut patterns. Yes. You know, I've heard of pre-cut patterns, Marlene, but I have never seen them, you know, for sale or anything like that. Man, it's getting hot in here. Okay, so. <laughs> Crafty Puerto Rican says, Mello, uh, no, Nancy said Mello wants to play. He, he does. I need to get him a brother or a sister. Um, I was just um, hinting to my husband, they're going to have to get another dog. So I think I'm going to wait for maybe two more years, and then I'll probably get another golden doodle. Um, I'll probably get a standard just like him. So that way he has his little pay date and stuff like that because, um, yeah, he is 
pretty active. He really is. And Crafty Puerto Rican says she loves to sew. She's just got to make more time for it. Yeah, I do too. Um, it's, I mean, I love it. I mean, I'm telling you, this is really like my, my place. It really, truly is. I love to do things. I really do. Um, you know, it's really my thing. Um, let's see. Oh, Robin says, I made my clothes and my children's plus their Halloween costumes. You know, my boss, my old boss, when I was working at the Marines, um, she's retired now. We're very good friends. I remember she um, always used to like Halloween and stuff like that. She would sew the costumes for her grandkids, you know, and um, she was really big on the sewing as well and stuff. And um, yeah, but I remember she she always used to do that. She used to have a beautiful picture of one of her grandchildren and her grand and she made like a lion um, costume. It was so cute. It, it had little things in there. So she was really big on that. Um, <laughs> oh, Joe, Jill, uh, Jill loves, ha uh, said the same thing. Well, she says, son, this is kind of funny, which is true. It's, it's, it's what I mean about being unique. Okay. She says, no one else in the job is going to be wearing what I'm wearing. And that's the reason why I started sewing again. And that is true. It's your stuff. You pick the pattern, you pick the fabric, you pick the design, you sewed it. It is not off the rack stuff, okay? It's not like you go into Macy's and you see a shirt that you like, then you go to work and somebody's got the same suit or the same shirt or the same blouse or whatever, right? So I kind of totally, totally agree with that. Yes, it was Fred's birthday. My hubby turned 60 yesterday. So he's got two more years and he is planning on retiring at 62. So just like I say, um i am out of there on my retirement date well he's already made it perfectly clear i got two years left and that's it he says he is retiring so yes brad had his birthday yesterday <laughs> and stuff and we went to his favorite place firebirds and he had his ribeye steak <laughs> he loves that place um Hey, Eartha, I love making things for myself. You make what you want with the fabric you want. I'm under five feet tall. Me too. I'm 4'11". <laughs> 4'11". I'm short too. I think everybody in my family is short. And I have to alter everything I buy. Me too. That's why I used to always like at work, Eartha, when I, you know, I used to wear a lot of business suits at work. And one of the things that I always did was I bought skirts, business suits. The reason why I did that is because if you buy the business suits with the pants, even though it said petite, I don't know what kind of petite they're talking about, but it wasn't for someone like me who's under five feet. So every time I had to, I bought a pants suit, I would have to take the pants to get them altered. And that costs extra money. So yeah, so I always used to have to wear the um, the skirts. That's what I used to do. Um, yeah, I mean, the altering and stuff. Let's see. Oh, Alba, mother used to make my all my clothes. You know, my mom used to, yep, that's right, Nancy. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Mom made us dresses, yes. My mom used to make a lot of clothes for me and my sister. And one of the things that I didn't like about that, though, is that she used to make the same exact outfit for me and Nancy, okay? I mean, it's like she used to buy the fabric, and then it was like, here's one for Nancy, here's one for Jeanette. I mean, no uniqueness at all. That was the only thing I hated. But yeah, my mom used to dress up me and my sister. <laughs> Surprised Nancy said that. Yeah, but it's true. Mom used to sew us. She and she used to sew her stuff too. She used to sew um outfit. I don't think she sold anything for my dad. I don't remember uh mom sewing shirts or anything like that for dad. But I know she sold for her and she sold for me and she sold for Nancy. 
that that I know, yeah, and stuff. Um, let me see. Yeah, everybody's telling Fred happy birthday. I'll have to let him know. <laughs> oh, Eartha saying her mom made her clothes. And she, oh, and she learned by helping her. You know, that is one thing, though, um, that my mom did not do. Um, she did not teach me and Nancy how to sew. And I just don't think she had time, though. I don't think she really had time. And honestly, I don't think me and Nancy had that interest back in the day either. So um, me and Nancy used to always play, and we always got in trouble. Well, I got in trouble. Um or when Nancy got in trouble, she just blamed me, you know, I mean, that's how, but that's what big sisters are there for, right, to, to, you know, get, you know, get in trouble, you know, whatever, but I don't think she did that much, you know, I don't think she, you know, well, she sold, but she just didn't, she didn't really apply it to me and Nancy, um, me and Nancy just started picking it up as we got older, and our kids got older and out of the house, because when you have young kids, it does get a little difficult, too, because with Cardito, he had basketball, he had karate, and then he had classes, and then, you know, school, and then he had tutors, and it's just, it's really hard when you have small children, right, because your life kind of surrounds around them, but then as they get older and they leave the house, then you kind of have more time, so me and Nancy are kind of like at that stage, because all of our children are grown now, they're big, so we have that extra time now. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see. Um, no one will know unless you point it out, Jeanette. Wear your shirt proudly. I will, Robin. I am going to wear it proudly. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Hey, Debbie. Um, let's see. Hey, Susan. Let's see what else. You make your own clothes. You don't have to worry. Yep. You could also embroider the top before you put it together. That is true, Iris. And that's the other thing, too. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you can do um, different types of embroidery on your own clothes as well. I mean, it's not just the sewing part. You can you can throw in the um, the embroidery and stuff. Um, let me see. Have you heard of projector sewing makes it faster? Love it. I have not. Victoria, I'll have to look that up. Not have, I've not heard of that at all. And stuff. So, oh, everybody's in January, huh? Oh, it's thanks. Yeah, that's right. Your birthday was this month as well. Um, yes, Iris. I like watching her too. Um, Iris says she let her favorite person to watch is Vanessa the Crafty Gemini, and I like watching her too. Um, I actually purchased several of her courses as well. She has several courses that she sells on um, sewing bags, wallets, and all that kind of stuff, and she is really good, and her videos are very good too because they are truly step by step. She doesn't skip any steps at all. And she actually shows how she sews it. She's really, really good at what she does. So I really enjoyed her, her, her channel, The Crafty Gemini. Um, she's actually one of the first people that I started watching when I tried to learn how to sew. So she is really, really good and stuff. Um, let's see. Let's see. Anybody else out there? Let's see. Um, this is my first live from New Mexico. Hey, Cindy, welcome. Hey, chocolate woman. Have you ever tried to embroider the outside of sheets or the roll of toilet paper? It's very popular. I have I have seen it done. Um, it's not difficult. It's just taking a couple of the sheets and, and, and piling them together and then like putting them in the, the embroidery machine. Um, but to me, um, I know it's kind of popular, but I got to be honest, it's just not something that had really interests me that much. Because, I mean, I think they're neat for decoration and stuff like that, but I kind of think of all thread in it, and I'm kind of like, I don't know. I prefer to, to, to embroider on fabric. It's just never been like my thing thing. But I know it is a popular thing um, that people do, and they do it for all occasions. They do it for Christmas. I've seen it for Thanksgiving. They do it for Valentine's Day. I've even seen like birthday 
Um, and really what it is, is you just take any embroidery design and you actually embroider on the toilet, on the toilet paper. And they take the toilet paper and they kind of like do a couple of plies, okay, to like thicken it, you know, and then they just, you know, float it and they embroider on it. So it's, it's really is kind of neat the way they do it. Um, but have I done it personally? No. Um, I know how to do it, but it's just not something that I just wanted to do. But they are really cute designs and stuff like that. But um, we kind of use our toilet paper at home. <laughs> I don't know if I want to embroider it, you know. <laughs> you know, it's just so, I don't know. We'll, you know, maybe one day I'll do it. It's the heck of it. But, and it is cute. I mean, it is cute. I mean, I see some people do that. And then they, like, wrap it up really nicely with ribbon around it. It's cute, but it's just not something that I kind of like was like, oh, I want to do that. But yeah, but it is kind of popular. I've seen it um, for several years that people have been doing that. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, oh, I see people are doing the toilet thing. <laughs> I guess I just I just haven't gotten into it. Um, ah, Jayla, she says she did the puff embroidery on her jean jacket in the front, and it looks really nice. Yeah, I mean, puff embroidery. A lot of times people think puff embroidery is just for baseball hats. Nope, you can do it on jackets. You can do it on shirts and stuff. Do it on a scarf. That look nice on a scarf too. If you do the initial and puff embroidery on a scarf, that would be pretty cool. Um, let's see. Hey, Sarah. Oh, new, the differences in stabilizer. There are different types of stabilizers. Yes, there is. And every stabilizer has its own specific purpose. Sarah, I did do an embroidery live on the channel on stabilizers. So if you go to the channel and you just um, type stabilizers, it'll pop up. And in that, in, in that, um, that happy hour, I talked about all the different stabilizers um, and what to use them for. But you're going to, yeah, there is a lot to learn about that. Same thing like with thread, a lot of different types of thread out there. Oh, Marlene says, hit that like button. So guys, if you guys like today's content, please do hit the, um, the give me a thumbs up and stuff because that does help the channel a lot. To help it to keep growing, that would be awesome and stuff. And if you're new to this channel and you like the content that I provide and you just want to keep up with it and stuff, subscribe. Please consider subscribing. That would be, you know, awesome and stuff. That way you can stay and watch all the um, embroidery happy hour because, you know, every Friday I'm going to come up with a topic that we can talk about. And I'm always going to be pumping out those videos out there to show you guys how to do new stuff and everything. Um, hey, Miss Max, I took your advice on the care cards. Yeah, um, care cards are very, to me, they're very, very important because, um, and I got that idea from one of the ladies that um, came to me because they wanted to place an order with me um, to do embroidered shirts for them. And, and I did their order. It was a woman's club. And to you know, to give you a little background, um, she said that they didn't like the way the shirts were that they had ordered the previous year. So um, she bought the shirt with her and then I looked at it and to me, the embroidery was fine. And I looked behind it because I was thinking, well, is it that they maybe they used the wrong stabilizer? Maybe they used the wrong needle. Maybe, you know, I, I was expecting to see like horrible um, embroidery. Now, the only thing that I saw was that the embroidery was a little wrinkled, but it was wrinkled because they washed it and they didn't know how to care for it. And um, when I took the shirt from her and then I put a piece of paper on top of the embroidery, you know, well, not paper, but I put a Teflon, Teflon sheet on top of the embroidery. And then I took the iron and then I just like, you know, moved it around a little bit and then I lifted it. She was like, oh, my God, it looks brand new, you know. <laughs> so, it, you know, it to me, it was, okay, 
you know, not everybody knows how to care for embroidered items. That's really what it is. And, you know, um, there is a specific way you have to care for it. And, you know, you can't just assume that whoever you're providing that product to, they actually know how to do it. So when I saw that, um, what I did was, you know, of course, you know, I took the order from her and, you know, I created the shirts, you know, and I, and I did the logo and all that kind of stuff. Everything, you know, looked good. What I made sure is for every shirt that I packaged in there, I included the care instructions in each package. And because I did that, what I decided to do was do this for my business. So whenever I sell dinner napkins, whenever I sell, um, you know, anything embroidered, okay, um, I always include one of those care instructions in there. So that way the customer knows exactly what to do because sometimes people really don't know what to do. So it's really important to um, to put that in there and stuff. So, you know, and, and it works, it works out pretty well, you know. Um, let's see. Oh, Evelyn, I keep forgetting you, your logo on your machine screen. Oh my God. You know what, Miha, I will do that video tomorrow morning. <laughs> I was supposed to do that last week. I am so sorry. Oh my goodness. Thank you for reminding me. Jeez. Oh, I can't believe it. It slipped my mind. And it, it's, it's so simple. It's going to be a real short video, I promise you. It's going to be a short video. I'm going to show you exactly. You click here, you click there, and this is what you do. And this is how you're going to add it, okay? I will do that video because I know a lot of people are going to want to know. Because um, what, what Evelyn is talking about is when you go to my embroidery machines, you see that my logo is on both of my machines on the screen. So she's like, how the heck did you do that and stuff? And so I'm going to show you how to do the settings on, on these uh, multi-unit machines to put logo on screen. Oh, my God. And so that I don't forget, I'm going to take this. Because I have my moments right on the screen. So that way, <laughs> I don't forget. So Evelyn, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I owe you that and stuff. Hey, Veronica. Um, your plan is excellent. You need to do something. Your body are like machines. They need to do something. Yes. And I just, you know, and I don't want to be... Um, I just don't want to go back. <laughs> I did my time. I did my time. Give me my pension check. That's what I want. Give me my social security check. Give me my pension check. That's it. You, you will never see me again. <laughs> That's just how I feel. <laughs> I don't want to go back. I'm tired. And I still got three years left. And I don't even want to think sometimes. And that's bad. You know, sometimes I'll be sitting in the meetings and they have opinions. I don't even give them mine. I just go, do what you want. Do what you want. You ain't stressing me. I'm going to collect my pension. Because some, you know what goes through my mind? Oh, they're trying to kill me so that way I don't collect my check. So that's why I stay nice, calm, cool, and collective. <laughs> um, Let's see. I'm with you. I am out of the banking business. <laughs> I started embroidery while under treatment and decided I would not go back. You get tired. You get tired. And you know what's so funny is I, I remember a long time ago, I read an article where sometimes people have a career and then sometimes in their life, they go through a career change, right? Um you know, and, and it's true. And it is true because I have transferred jobs, um, you know, because I, I work for the federal government and I have transferred jobs every five years. And the reason why I do that is because I like change. I like meeting new people. I like learning about different agencies and all that kind of stuff and everything. So I, I like to transfer every five years. So every time I meet someone, you know, and they tell me, oh, I've worked here for 25 years. I'm like, oh, the same agency? Oh my 
God, can't do it, can't do it, can't sit next to the same person for that long. Oh my God, it'll get on my nerves. Can't do it. So anyway, I like to to move around. I like to move around. I like I like that because that to me it, it keeps me um, it keeps it interesting, keeps it fresh, right? But I am at my last stop and I do not want to move around anymore. I'm tired and um, yeah, I just want to do my 30 and I want to get out. I want out. I'm done. I really am done. You know, um, let me see. Oh, Wendy said I gave my notice in at work the other day. I retired 8th March. Congratulations, Wendy. Congratulate! I can only imagine how I'm gonna feel. I'm gonna have my 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 smile from ear to ear, okay? And I'll probably do one of those Dave Chappelle uh, skits, you know, like the one where he, you know, I don't know if you guys ever saw that um, that little skit where he thought he got Oprah Winfrey pregnant and he went to work and he told everybody, "I quit." Well, that probably be me. I quit now if i kick the garbage can and man i'll be so happy <laughs> congratulations that's awesome i cannot wait for my time and stuff i mean so i told my girlfriend that's already retired i told her oh i can't wait for those three years to go up but she told me so she says don't wish your life away so when she told me that i'm like i'm like i could hurry it up and then after I got my three years, let it go slow, you know. <laughs> but I know what she means. Don't don't rush it. So that's fine, you know. But yes, Wendy. Happy retirement. Hey, Beach Crafters, how are you? Hey, Fatima, how are you? I want to do embroidery, and I look at the internet. Everything is face to face. How do you make your decisions? I don't know what you're asking. In their face, blue, wide eyes. How do you make your decisions? Just look for the best, um, the best videos to follow. You know what what teaching style helps you and stuff. Um, everything is not everywhere there you have your own touch to projects do it the way you desire it to look and put your own touch yes sarah loves to quilt and starting out embroidery plan on doing embroidery and quilts i made 18 quilts for christmas stockings and embroidered names on them that's cool and Miss Max is definitely a learning curve for embroidery. It is. It really is. And stuff. <laughs> my sister. <laughs> oh my God, Nancy. Okay. If you ever come to Virginia, then I I'll talk to Miss Banks and see if she'll hang with you. Okay. <laughs> I think I think my sister's jealous because I live near Miss Banks. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Let's see what else. Hey, Ozzy, how are you doing? Um. Oh, Ozzy, see something right here. Let me go down here. Let me see. May I say something funny? I think Jeanette had a shot of tequila today. She was chatting up Spanish during Liliana's. Yes. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Ozzy. You know what I was doing? I was using a, a Spanish translator. Because <laughs> I, I know how to talk Spanish, but I never learned how to read or write it. So I know how to read it just a little bit, but writing it can be kind of like messed up. So I did a, I used a Spanish translator and stuff but you gotta remember too i'm puerto rican we have bacardi we don't have tequila <laughs> we got the bacardi the puerto rican rum that's what we drink <laughs> but i did have a margarita today too out to in all fairness so yes i had a margarita um let's see let's see what else we got here 
There she go. We can't be working for little. Yep. And need to get paid. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because, I mean, that is one thing we were talking about at Liliana's Live today and stuff that, you know, some people, they, you know, when they, they, was, they were mentioning that when they are trying to sell their items, like people try to negotiate those prices and stuff. And, you know, Ozzy and me were like, just no, just no. You know, I mean, no, it's 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 about paying what you're getting paid, what you're worth. You have to. You just have to do it because then you're not going to feel good. You're not going to feel good about it. You know, um, you want to feel good about what you do and stuff. And it's just like um, Debbie says right here, not all money is good money. OK, um, you want to make sure that, you know, just like the customer wants to be treated fairly well you should demand to be treated fairly too that's i i, I strongly feel about that i strongly do i really do because you you have to you have to and so hey ladies costas how are you hey gail where is the one oh luna designs i tell you the red one is downstairs today but you know, I bought it out like two Fridays ago and stuff. This is water tonight because I had a margarita. And you can't, you shouldn't be mixing. Okay, so if I had a margarita and then I have wine, you can get kind of sick. That happened to me once. That was not a good thing. Mm, wasn't pretty. Nope, nope, nope. So you can't, don't, don't be mixing your drinks now and stuff. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Okay, what mighty loop? Okay. Hey, small fry. Okay, she has a very good question here. Okay, what mighty hoops would you recommend for starting out? Okay, well, small fry, it really depends on what it is that you want to do. Okay, now I will tell you one thing for sure getting the five by five, and I think it's five and a half by five and a half, is a good side to get, which is. Uh, the small blue ones, and I want to make sure I'm telling you the right size. Um, yeah, it's a 5.5. Okay, these are really good to get because I will tell you this. When it comes to embroidery, um, there are certain things that you're going to be doing a lot of that I find that a lot of people do is a lot of monograms. Um, I, I don't know if I said that right. Did I say that right? Monograms? You you or did I say like the the testing of the thing? Okay, well, initials, okay? <laughs> you're going to be doing a lot of initials and um you know, you're going to be doing probably logos like uh left chest logos. Um, you know, so I would I would say a 5 a 5 5.5 hoop is a good one to have. Um, I use my eight by nine hoop a lot. Okay. Um, and then I would get the biggest hoop for your machine, which were for me, it's the eight by 13. Okay. Um, I would start off with like those three. Now I'm going to tell you small fright. These hoops are expensive, but they're worth every penny. They really are. They truly are. However, though, um, if you want, if you go to the channel, and I think I have it in the description, there's a phone number, you call them up. And if you, I, I don't know if you have to give them my code or not, but I would call them up and ask them, could you get free shipping? If they say, oh no, it, it's additional for, ship, for shipping, then tell them, okay, Boricua Sewing is my code. Cause they said that if, if someone sells, tells them Boricua Sewing, um, they'll, they'll, take out the shipping okay so those items first of all they're very very expensive they're very very heavy okay um so you know you can order it through online but when you order it online you have to you you have to pay the shipping costs okay so i really recommend you know and, and shipping can cost a lot of money it can cost like 75 80 dollars and then you can apply that for another hoop so just want to let you know okay so um yeah, but, you know, I would, um, it depends really on what you want to do. Um, but those are really the three that for me 
I thought were a good buy to do from the very, very beginning. Okay. Um, let me see. Yes. And my sister, okay. I'm going to highlight her right there for you guys that don't know. Um, this is her YouTube channel, which is Gate gifts hq she does a live every saturday at noon um she is really into like knitting she does embroidery too and sewing and, and i mean she explores a whole lot of crafts as well so um you know hope you guys can join her i try to join her her group one thing that i like about her channel which i'm going to tell you is a lot of fun is in the very beginning of her live she does like a quilting quiz and it is a lot of fun because you see a lot of people in the chat trying to figure out what is the answer to those those quizzes and i think she i think the questions are three or four i don't remember but it's just it's just a small amount she gives you like 30 seconds for you to like answer them and it is a lot of fun and stuff so hopefully you guys can join her tomorrow at noon um it is it is a lot of fun and stuff it's at noon at eastern standard time okay so yeah so her channel is is really cool she's she does and and her video is a lot more professional than mine because her husband helps her and stuff i don't got anybody helping me so you guys have watched me long enough you guys know all my stuff is raw so if i make a mistake it stays right in there and i just tell you guys oops that well that didn't work you know <laughs> so that's just how you know how i do it and stuff hey lillian how are you um let's see uh let's see let's see oh margie says she got a new uh, I think it's the still uh layer still uh, layer and stuff. Those are really nice machines. You got a really nice one. That's a nice baby. Hey, C. McGee, how are you? I love your lives. I never comment, but I love watching you. So encouraged. Oh, thank you. And so I'm glad you are enjoying it. And so, hey, Lucy, all Puerto Rico in the house. Oh, I love your channel. Oh, Puerto Rico, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> let's see um are they color fast what's color fast iris i don't understand what you mean what a color fast let me see because mm, i was showing you the fabric i showed you this um if you're talking about those new towels that i'm trying to trying to uh look into for the embroidery and stuff i will tell you this the 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 um the only color and that's the only downfall. That's the only downfall that I like. When I went to order these, I did not see this in any other color. Now, for those of you guys that have watched me for a long time, you guys know that I only like two colors of, of kitchen towels. I like the beige and I like the white, okay? Because I think that is really like the two most popular colors that people use for their, their kitchens, right? Um, you know, I... I did buy one pack of black and then they're still like wrapped up and stuff because I don't know what to embroider on it because um, it, it would have to be, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I bought it. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know. But anyway, they're there. Okay, so <laughs> I'll have to figure it out. All right. But, um, you know, those are the only two colors that I offer in my shop. And the reason why I do that is to control inventory, okay? Which is one of the reasons why I don't like to sell embroidered clothing, okay? Because you have to think about inventory and the sustainment of that inventory. I like to keep things simple. Life is complicated enough, okay? Now, if that's your thing, that's cool, okay? But for me, it's not for the simple reason is that I have to think about um, my space. I have to be conscientious of my space. I have to think about my family. Um, I don't want this hobby to spill over to the other rooms in this house. I really don't want to do that. The simple reason is because this is a home and I want my son and my husband to feel like it's a home. So if i end up buying all this inventory of different clothes which clothes comes in different sizes and all that stuff and if i get all this inventory of kitchen towels kitchen towels come in all different types of colors and textures too so i decided i'm just going to work with i what i know works for me which is 
the white and the beige, okay? And I already have one vendor that I like to work with. Like I said, the only reason why I'm looking for uh, another vendor is just so I can have a backup. That's it. That's the only reason, okay? But um, yeah, I like. I want to keep my inventory in control. I don't want this spilling to other areas of the house if I can prevent that. And I am going to prevent it because I just, I don't like it. I, I just don't. It's just not my thing. So anyway, um, yeah. So yeah, that's just, that's just it, you know. Um, hey, Walk by Faith. Oh, two years ago. I didn't even know. Well, you know what? Walk by Faith. I just learned about so yet i mean because i just I, I found them by accident and i was like oh my god and, and you know but i'm gonna tell you something the way they're selling that fabric online very very genius very genius i'm telling you i'm i was like see what i'm talking about it's it's not like here's my store and you got to come physically see me if you really think about it, they found a way to not only sell their fabric from the store in their location, but they are selling it throughout the country, you know? And I think that is awesome. That is awesome. That is a great way to think about it. I mean, oh, it's, um, let me see. Um, Hey Terry, how are you? And hey Angela, I saw your your um your message. Um oh look at that. Okay, Angela says that uh, because she likes to do the, the kids stuff and everything, and she gets her fabric from spoon flower cotton spandic jersey. It's expensive but great quality. It's a four-way stretch. There you go. That's another place we could check out. Spoonflower. That's another place. Um, the first thing I did was go find a video. You for, uh, oh, that's so great. Uh, and so um, Terry said that she, her daughter wanted the, the fluffy embroidered blanket and stuff, and she was able to make that. That's awesome. That's one of the things that I really do like also about the embroidery and stuff like that. So you can take any little simple thing and you can really turn it into something special. And I bet you your daughter is like carrying that blanket with pride, you know? I mean, it's like so awesome and stuff. Hey, Eve, how you doing? Are the fabric 100% cotton? Yes, it is. It, it, I mean, I'm telling you, you won't be disappointed. I, you really won't. I mean, you know, I, like I said, I ordered it because I wanted to just give it a shot. I was like, hmm, look at these guys selling all this fabric, you know? And, and let me tell you, they got their own little thing, you know? I mean, they just out there selling it. And I said, let me just buy some and, and test. I'm telling you the quality of this fabric I mean, it's really good. I mean, I, it's like, and and these are, these are name brand fabric. Some of these are really name brand fabric. They are very, very thick. I really, they, they look nice. They, they really do. I mean, I was happy, I was happy with it. I mean, one of the things that you can do also is when they have their sales, just buy a sample. Try it. Just buy a sample. Just, um, you know, you don't have to buy as much as I did. You know, I just bought um, four just to see. I think the whole thing was like, oh, shoot, I forgot. I think it was like 80 bucks, something like that for all of this. Um, it was something like that. But uh, just buy one. Just buy one pack. Just buy one pack. Um, and I think they have five cart yards. And I think they were like $30, right? So if you really think about it, so it's five, uh, thirty dollars for for uh, a cut of five yard fabric, and then five dollars shipping. So it's thirty five bucks, just to try it. You know, just do it once, and just just try it and see. 
I'm telling you, Eve, they they got a customer out of me. I will definitely be buying more from them. And if I'm ever in Nevada, I would love to go visit their shop. I really would. I would probably, if I go to Nevada, I may have to take an extra um, suitcase with me just so I could go to their shop and buy fabrics and fill up that extra suitcase with fabric and bring it back. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things that I, I that's why I'm kind of glad when I visit Nancy when I go to Florida, because I can buy all the fabric that I want. And all I got to do is just throw it in the in the trunk of the Tesla and psh, we're heading home, we're heading home and stuff. But um, yeah, give them a shot and stuff um you i think you you may you may like them. i i did i really like them and they really had some very nice patterns of fabric i was really i was impressed i really was i was impressed i like it now the thing is after a while right because it's like a whole hour of them showing you fabric right because they'll they'll have the camera and then they put the can the, the fabric there and they put the the number of the fabric, how many yards it is, and the price. So they'll say, okay, this is number 136. And then if you like it, then you type 136 in the chat, right? And then the first ones to get 136, depending how many they have in stock, he'll call out the names. Okay, 136. 136 is going to go to Boricua Sewing Crafts. 136 will go to Gifts HQ, whatever, Miss Banks, whatever, right? They'll go through it. And, but they go kind of, you know, not, you know, quick, quick, but not, not too slow either. But after a while sitting there and then watching all the fabrics, you know, you, you could get a little tired, you know, but you can also get addicted too, because you'd be like, oh, that fabric's cute. And then you buy that. And then you buy another one. Then you buy another one. Then you buy another one. Next thing you know, you're like, oh, I just spent 200 bucks, you know? So you got to be kind of careful to keep track of what you, what, you know, you bought to make sure you don't go a little overboard. But for the first time, I would just just buy one just to see so that you can see the quality of it and stuff um, of the fabric and if you like it. But I, I got a feeling you guys are going to like it because I'm going to be honest, that fabric is really good. And I am thinking like moving forward, I mean, you know, I'm still going to go, of course, to Joanne's and, you know, Hobby Lobby doesn't offer the coupons. So that's why I really don't do that. They don't do military discount or anything like that. But Joanne's does. So um, they have the coupons and they got the military discount. So I'm always going to make a little trip out there and see, you know, if anything, I'll use the coupons for scissors and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, yeah, I mean, I really liked what they had. Um, yeah, so... Oh, Eartha said she bought a Singer 99K machine for $15. And it sews like a drink. See? And I'm going to tell you something. I think those old sewing machines that they made back in the day, those are solid. Because I got a feeling my mother's sewing machine is going to outlive her me, my son, and probably a couple of grandkids down the road. Because I'm telling you, that is steel. That is steel. I mean, they just don't. It's like, wow. Even look at that, Robin. You know what? I wonder if my mom got her sewing machine from Sears. I got a feeling that my mom did get her sewing machine from Sears. And stuff. It comes in a cabinet and stuff. They don't make them like that no more. Now all sewing machines are plastic. Everything's plastic now, you know. So, yeah. But, um, oh, there you go. Margie got some more details on them. There you go. Um, okay. They do Saturdays. That's the D dash. Six dollars a yard. And Margie, that's where I bought these. You know, the six dollar a yard. And Tuesdays is the new stash. Yep, and it's $12 a yard for something in that area. And it's all name brand. Yeah. Yep. I'm telling you, it's 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 really cool. It, it really is. Hey, Annette, thanks. Oh, and tomorrow is the D-Dash Live. So, yep, so tomorrow might be the D-Dash, guys. Yep. 
So I'll probably, I'll probably watch. Yeah, they got some really nice stuff. They really do. They really do got some nice stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, okay. Easy to burn. Oh, that's kind of disappointing that these are easy to burn. But I don't know. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. I mean, I could use it as a backup. I could just use it as a backup. Make sure I just leave a note in there that not for oven and, it, you know, it's not a pot holder, you know, and stuff. So um, let's see. Okay. Is there anything else out there? Any questions? Let me see. Have you heard of the dream machine from, hey, Danny, I have heard of the dream machine. I'm not too familiar with it, but I have heard um, people mention that uh, machine. Uh, what stabilizer do I need on thin cotton shirts? I would do a poly, a no-show poly mesh on there with cutaway. Um, that's what I would do. And honestly, too, Danny, think about what you are embroidering on that um, that thin shirt. Okay, uh, I would not go for any embroidery designs that are very dense because you're going to end up with puckering. Okay, um, I would try to stay away from a dense design for thin cotton shirts. As a matter of fact, I would try to persuade the person to go a little thicker on that cotton shirt, you know, so that, <laughs> you know, can, uh, there you go, Miss Banks, here you go, here you go, there you go, you would use water soluble, cut away, tear away, depending on the thickness of the design, but with, yeah, Tear away, I would kind of shy away from the tear away, I think, Miss Banks, because if it's a shirt, it's going to wash a lot. But I, I would probably stay away from a dense design. I would not do a, a, you know, a dense design on it because a dense design, there's a lot of stitches. And you already said that the shirt is very thin. So you don't you want to prevent that puckering from happening. Okay. And there you go, Robin. The same thing. No show mesh. Mm -hmm. That will the no show mesh will help to give it stability. Okay. Um, I don't have no show mesh. What else can I use? Um, I would get it. <laughs> That's what I would do, Danny, because. Um. This is the problem that you're going to have, Danny. Um, and this is what I would do. I would actually get the no-show mesh for the simple fact that you already said your shirt is thin. Now, the thing is, depends on the color also of the shirt, okay? If it's a white, thin shirt, then when you use a cutaway stabilizer underneath that thin uh, white shirt, you're going to see right through it on the shirt, you're going to see the paper. Okay. Because yeah, I got a, I have a shirt on, but all right. So I don't have a, hold on. Okay. Relax, people. I'm not going to take off my shirt or anything. I just want to try to do a demonstration. I want to see if maybe you guys could see it on camera, okay? All right. So let's say, <laughs> Danny, look what you're making me do. Okay. So anyway, all right. I don't know if you guys can see. All right. Yes, you can. See right here? See the, see the stabilizer on the shirt? It's inside the shirt, okay? I got my shirt right here, and here's the stabilizer. So this is what we're talking about. This is what I what I want you to see. See, it's a little crooked right now. <laughs> okay, let me just put it straight. All right, so here we go. All right, see right here on the shirt, and right here, this is the stabilizer. The stabilizer, this is cutaway. This is thick, okay? So what's going to happen is when you embroider, right, 
of course you're gonna you're gonna cut your your cutaway all right but you're not gonna cut it all off all right because when you cut cutaway you cut around the embroidery design you don't and you don't cut too close to the stitches because you don't want to accidentally snip a stitch and you, the cutaway is to keep the the design stable right so what's going to happen is you're going to have your nice shirt you're going to have your embroidery but then around the embroidery you're going to see the outline of your cutaway that's why i mean you could give it a shot you can give it a shot okay and then what i would recommend is try to cut as close as you possibly can, like just leave a quarter of an inch of stabilizer, uh, you know, for the, the side of the stitches. That's what I would probably do if, if you are determined that you don't want to get the no no show mesh, do it that way. OK, um, just just uh, but just be aware that you could um, that could happen, that when you use your cutaway stabilizer and you put it inside, you know, the shirt and then you embroider when you're done, you might see the outline of the stabilizer inside, you know, across the shirt. It's going to, you're going to see it. Okay. Just, just, just be aware that that, that could be there because, and sometimes customers, they don't like that. They don't like that. And people sometimes don't like that. So, you know, just keep that in mind, you know, that's, that's it. So hope that hope that helped. Um, let's see. Um, what else? Oh, and here's another tip that Miss Banks giving you, Danny. Um, it's a stabilizer chart from the embroidery library. Um, this is another thing too. Um, let me show you this. This is something that I find very, very useful, especially for those of you guys that are new and, and have never seen this information before. Right here on this top line right here where it says um, Fabrics 101 uh, Stabilizer and Design Guide, okay? Um, do a Google on this, on this, on this statement right here, okay? And what's going to happen is you're going to get a copy of this guide, all right? It's only, it's, it's just a couple of pages. It's not long, okay? This is a very handy, handy guide that I use a lot. And it talks about, here are the columns, okay? It talks about the fabric. It talks about the stabilizer, the top of the design, and the needle that you should use for embroidery, okay? So this is a pretty neat thing. And if you look at, and if you look over here where it talks about the fabric, it talks all about the different types of fabric. Okay. Like uh let's see. Like let's say right here, um, if you if you you're you're gonna embroider on de denim, okay. All right, you're gonna use cutaway. Um, and then you're going to use 75, uh, 11 needle sharp. Okay. So it's a very good article and I would keep it handy. This is something that I use. I have it printed out and I keep it right next to my embroidery machines. And I use it as a, as a reference, you know, whenever I, you know, somebody presents to me a piece of fabric that I've never worked with before and stuff. And I, and I'm really not sure about what type of stabilizer or needle or kind of design I can do on that. That's a, a pretty good article to have handy. So, yeah. So, you know, I, I would recommend doing that. Okay. Um, yeah. So Danny, I hope, uh, that helps. Um, Let's see. Ah, Susan, thank you. <laughs> she said, hit that like button. Um, we are, they're asking, where are we from in Puerto Rico? My family is actually from Ponce and Yalco. 
that's where they are from. Yeah. And so, but I think my mom, I think my dad is from Yalco and 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 we have family in Ponce, but we kind of have family all, all over Puerto Rico. Um I think my mom is from oh shoot, I don't even know. I gotta ask her. I gotta ask her. I'm always I always say uh Ponce and Yalco. And, and because that's where me and my sister always used to go in the summer. My parents always send us there to Puerto Rico in the summer because, you know, we grew up in New York City. And in New York City, you know, you're in an apartment. What are you going to do? So my mom used to, like, send us to Puerto Rico to hang out with the family in the summer. So, um, yeah, I love that. So, um, oh, Ozzy got her. Ozzy's drinking his Bacardi. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. <laughs> Maybe I should have Bacardi next Friday. All right. Um, Karen said, how long have you had your brother at C1900 and how dependable has it been? Karen, it has been really a very good machine to me. I'm telling you, I haven't had any issues with that machine. Um, I got it in, I believe, Carlito was, I think I got it in 2019. So I've had it for four years now. Yeah. Wow. Four years. Yes. I've had it for four years. Never had an issue with it. Still in borders great. Still sells great. And I still use it all the time. All the time. So Karen, I do like it a lot. Another thing though, if you are in, if you're asking me because you're in the market for it, I would recommend looking at the next model up. Okay, they now have an SC2000. The difference between the two, and I and, and you'll see there's a video that I made on the channel about that, the, the difference between the two. Um, but the thing is, the, the difference in price, I think, is about like four or five hundred dollars. I'm not sure. You got to look it up. And um, what I would do is, uh, you know, I, I do have videos also on how to get stuff cheap. Okay like how to get a uh, discounted gift cards and all that kind of stuff. So I recommend you look at that too, because I think Joann's might be offering the SE 2000. And if they do, you want to make sure you try to get it as at an affordable price, if that's the one you want to get. Okay. So, you know, always try to keep that money in your pocket. Okay. Um, Cause I'm all about saving money. All right. So, um, but the, the big difference is the SE 2000 um, cuts. Uh, the thread between, um, you know, jump stitches, okay, it has automatic uh, trimming, as for the SC1900 doesn't. Um, but if that doesn't bother you, I mean, I don't think you can go wrong either way. You really can't. I mean, I love my SC1900. I wouldn't trade it in for anything in the world. Matter of fact, I love this so much. I even bought another one and had that sent to my sister's. Because I was like, she she bought the same first sewing machine that I had, and she loved it. But I kept telling her, you need a better sewing machine. I upgraded from a brother H H C 1850. My, I think my sister still has that sewing machine. She, um, you know, I sold mine. And when I sold it, I used that money to help buy the SC 1900. Uh, so my sister has the the um, HC eighteen fifty, and she's got her SC nineteen hundred. And as soon as she got it, I asked her. I said, "Do you see a difference?" And she's like, "Yeah, it's it sews like butter, like mantequilla, like smooth." I mean, it was just really really nice. So, yeah, Karen, I I like the machine. Me personally, I do like it. Um, I don't think you could go wrong with it. If you want to take a look at it, if you, you know, I always encourage people, please visit your sewing shops. You really should because the sewing shops, you'd be amazed. They have all the machines out there. They have them on tables. Try them out. Give them a shot. I mean, they, believe me, they, they will let you sit there and try them, okay? Um, that way you get a feel for it and you you know what machine is right for you. Because there's just so many machines out there with different functionalities. That's why when people ask me what's the best embroidery machine, like multi-needle, I really, 
I know people get pissed off because I tell them you got to get what's right for you. I don't push any brands. Okay. And I don't, I know I don't, um, you know, it's like, I can, you know, I do have companies reach out to me and they're like, Oh, we would like you to, to do like, uh, affiliated programs, you know? And so I'm like, no, I, I want to buy my own machines. I don't need, I don't need free machines. Um, no, I'll, I'll buy my own. Um, I like, I like to pick my own machine and, and if, and I spend my own money on my own machines. Um, and I buy what's right for me. So I never tell people this is the machine to get. You should get it. This is it. Whatever. No, because everybody has different needs, you know, and a lot of people that I know have different machines and they're happy with them. You know, like the crafty Puerto Rican, she loves her Rakoma. I like my brother. I believe Ozzy has another one. I think, is it SW something? Oz has a multi new machine and it's another brand as well. Liliana has a multi new machine. She, she does the happy. She loves her happies. I mean, not every, not every machine is for everybody. Everyone has their own needs. Everybody has their own budget. Everybody, you know, learns differently and stuff like that. Um, you know, so you just gotta, you gotta do your homework. You just, you know, that's, that's the only thing I tell people. I know people get upset with me because that's what I tell. That's what I say. But the thing is, I don't want to push anything to anybody because, you know, at the end of the day, um, I'm not going to be in the room with you with the, with the machine. Okay. So you need to buy something that's comfortable for you. And I always say that buy what, what is right for you. However, though, do your research, talk to a lot of people, Talk to people that actually own the machines. I I am not a, a big fan of talking to people that push the sales of certain machines because they're affiliated and stuff like that. So you got to remember they're they're paid to to say stuff, okay? And they have a contract with a certain company. So even if there was a issue with a machine, they can't say anything to you about it because they could get in trouble because they they're affiliated with that machine. Okay. So that's why I don't like doing affiliations with, with embroidery machines because I pay for my brother machine. So if, if my brother machine sucks, then I'll be like, yeah, this machine just didn't work out for me. And I can be honest about it because it was my hard earned money that paid for it. And it's my opinion. But if I get it for free from brother, there is a contract with them okay you know and you are limited to what you can expose yourself to so i'm just saying that's it just just be you know be be aware just be buyer aware i think you know that's all and so i didn't mean to get into tangent and stuff like that but i just you know want to share okay um but yeah oh and now that i had the same thing yeah i i've been very happy with it i have been very happy with it I recommend um, going to a sewing sewing uh, uh, sewing place and see if they have it. If they have it at the table, and they may have an SC nineteen hundred, they may have an SC two thousand. That's the latest version. That's the upgrade of the the SC nineteen hundred. They did at one time have an SC nineteen fifty. Okay, but the thing is, um, the difference. Um, really lies between the 1900 and the 2000 model. So that is where I would look at the breakdown of it. I do have a video where I talk about the two differences of these machines and you guys may want to check that out. So that way I talk more in debt because I go in debt of what the 1900 does and then what are the new features that the SC2000 is offering and then my whole thing in the video was, okay, there's a difference of $500 or whatever. Is it worth it, right? So I, that was kind of like my thing on it. But um, there's a lot of sewing machines out there that are really, really good. Um, I have a girlfriend that has a Viking. She's very happy with it. Um, I, I heard those are really good machines as well. Um, so, you know, do your homework. You got to find what's right for you. You know, you, you know, I do have also a whole series of videos on nothing but the SC1900 as well. 
where I show the different functionalities, how to do things, how, how it works and stuff like that. So you may want to watch those just to see if, if maybe the machine is user friendly enough for you too, because that is also very important, you know, um, making sure that you're getting a machine that you can fully understand and you feel comfortable with because to spend all this money and then you have a piece of equipment and then you're just staring at it because you're not, you know, you're not feeling it and you're not like understanding it and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's not, mm, don't do that. Don't do that. You got, you want to make sure that you're comfortable with what you got. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Well, I'm going on two hours and a half. These embroidery happy hours are really long. So I think next week I'm going to put embroidery happy hours. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> we need to change our title here. And stuff. But the thing is, I like to also talk to people, um, you know, and, and answer all the questions. That's the thing. But um, Jeanette, oh, I mean, does the fabric bleed? After? You know, Iris, I don't know. If the fabric is bleeding or not, I really don't know. It's a beautiful fabric. But whether it's going to bleed when I wash it, I guess we'll have to find out. I mean, right now, it's still packaged up nicely how I received it. Um, I hope not. I really hope not because it's gorgeous. You know, I don't know if this would bleed. I, I guess we're going to have to find out. I, You know, we'll have to see. Um... Let me see. Hey, Sylvia, how are you? She says she watched Behind the Pink Door on YouTube. Love the fabric. They are in Europe. Don't buy often because of the shipping. They have excellent. Oh, so there's another shop out there that is doing the same thing. And so, she, oh, and um, she also says she likes the natural fabrics. They cost more, but the quality is... Yeah, Sylvia, you know, and that's the thing. Miss Banks taught me, you know, I'm telling you, she, she kept telling me quality matters, especially for, and it's, it's just like the embroidery, like I say, quality matters for the life. Don't just, don't just do embroidery and embroider on any little thing. Think of the long term, right? And, and you know, sometimes when you buy some of these inexpensive fabrics and they're, they're kind of like paper, kind of feel you know what i mean um think about it right think about it so but you know the long term of it but like i said also it depends on how you're planning on using that fabric so if you're just using that fabric for applique and you're going to be putting light uh you know the the um hey boo boo how you doing oh mellow's here there he is um if you're just going to be uh buying a the fabric and you're going to be putting it behind um, applique and stuff like that. It, you know, it, it just depends what you're going to be using it for. Then maybe you you don't need the, the, the expensive, thick uh, fabric if, if that's what you're planning on doing. What do you think about that, Melo? What do you think? What do you think? You think okay. All right. I think he wants to <laughs> see. I think that's what he wants. You want it? Oh, my goodness, boo-boo. All right, I got to spend some time with this dog. Oh, my God. All right, so I'm going to go through the... Um, I'm going to try to go through the chat real quick. I think... Oh, I'm not even close to the end. All right, guys. Oh, Oz says that she he and Bella's on Bella Canvas. Hey, so love. Um, oh, what's the article called again? Okay, let me put that. I'm going to post it one more time. Um... Go uh, fab Fabrics 101, Stabilizer and Design Guide. Do a Google on this, and I'm telling you, print it out. Keep it by your machine. Keep it by your machine and stuff. You're really going to love that. Um, and so, okay, I am, and I am so sorry, guys. I am scrolling down really quick because <laughs> I am, hey, Liliana, how you doing? Just got home a little late. Um, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit because I it's we're going on two almost three hours. Oh my god. Okay, and I and I want to value you guys time. That's one thing I will say about my sister. When she does her show, it's one hour and that is it. She is off. But I just like to go through the whole chat thing, you know, and stuff. Um yeah, so 
let's see. And, and I want to make sure that I, I didn't get anything. But you know what, guys? If I if you put a question out there and I didn't get it, because I know that I'm, I'm I'm trying to scroll around and all that kind of stuff to try to get everybody in there. Um, you know, hey Simone, how you doing? Hey Gail. Um, then what just put it in the comments, put it in the comments and stuff, and I'll always address comments and everything, because that is one thing that I always do in the channel. I always look to see what kind of comments I have in there. And if, you know, if you have questions and stuff, put them out there. And then also, um, you know, if you guys are not part of the Facebook group, which is Happy Hour, um, Embroidery Happy Hour Adventures, make sure you join that Facebook group. And if you have questions and stuff, you need help with anything, something like that, post it on there. If I can't get to it to answer it, the, the everybody in that group is really, really great. They will go ahead and they will try to help you out with anything that you have. So, oh, oh my goodness. I think I lost you guys. Okay, there we go. Okay, I keep hitting this mouse. It's pretty sensitive, these little uh, apple marks and stuff like that. Okay, so guys, I am going to call it the night because it is pretty late and stuff. And I am so sorry. You know, as always, I blah, 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 and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So anyway... I'm going to call it the night, and I will say good night to you guys. And as always, thank you so much for spending Friday night with me. As always, I really do enjoy this time with you guys. I love going through the chat, talking with you guys, and sharing topics and everything. If there is ever a topic you want me to cover or something like that, just let me know. Okay, and I will do my research and everything, and I will try to bring that over to you guys. So guys, I hope you had a great time tonight. And you know, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And you know, please hit that like button. So you know, it really does help the channel a lot. And as always, have a great time. Happy sewing and happy embroidery. So I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one. And me and Mello are going to go hang out together. Okay, so I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Have a good night, everyone.